Yep, that's the one for this court. <laughs> we might put, pay him to come up here. Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, I have a motion for the executive minutes of December 9, 2013. If there is any discussion, we will then table it because we forgot to discuss it in executive. But I, uh, I was trying to move things forward. I, but a motion, please. I moved it. A second. And any discussion? Because then we'll table it. If Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe. I'm voting yes on January 13th and abstaining on the 9th. Oh, we, we just, we're just doing the, the 9th. Oh, then I'm abstaining on that there one. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Correct. We have a motion for January 13th, 2014. So moved. I'll second it. Second. Discussion? All right, then we can roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Thanks. Mr. Wolkowitz? Uh, yes. And Mr. Uh, was. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Contrary to rumor, we did not move the meeting up an hour so we could get home to watch the luge or uh, ice dancing. We have moved it up because our, the lovely weather snowed out our budget hearing of last Monday. So we have combined the two meetings. And I'll talk a little bit about, a bit about that shortly. So we have the extra hour right now. But first of all, to all the uh, baby boomers out in the audience, a happy 50th to the day the Beatles changed our music lives forever. It was quite a moment for many of us that sat in front of that TV. The Employee of the Month for February, Sam Basilino of the Department of Public Works for his devoting personal time in the past month to assist a co-worker, practice driving a truck in order to obtain his commercial driver's license, the borough benefits by having a skilled, more productive employee. So he gave, gave up his time to make sure we had a stronger department. So thank you, Sam. <coughs> and anniversaries for the month of February, 25th anniversary, S Sergeant Joseph Cirillo of the Madison Police Department. And moving on to a couple other notes I want to share. You know, there's often a time you go go through. Actually, that should be, should be lieutenant, right? Yeah. Lieutenant. Uh, yeah. yeah. Lieutenant. So we should celebrate uh, Joe Cirillo's time here with a proper rank. It was the note said uh, lieutenant, and I stuck on my cue card. Sometimes you have to go off of it, but it is Lieutenant Joe Cirillo is celebrating 25th anniversary. Now on to a, a few thoughts and uh, a couple other announcements. Um, you know, as we go around town, you, you run into certain people that help define what Madison is. And over the last month, we lost two women that I put in that category that define what Madison is. People that cared, lifelong Madison residents. About a month ago, we lost Jenny Keemer, a volunteer in Madison Senior Center, regular group of friends that met for lunch. She took them day trips. And of course, she was a mother of retired police sergeant John Keemer, but she was someone when I would knock on her door or see her at senior events, she would make sure that I knew what she thought we could do better in Madison, but she also thanks us for what we did very well. And just this past week, Helen Artiglare, who uh, many know from her world famous rice pudding, but um, born in Madison, mother of Ralph Artiglare, Main Street subs, she was working Main Street subs until um, the day she died, and I would often see her, and I would sit down there for lunch. She would sit down and just tell me all about what she thought about Madison, but she, is, she was active through the Red Hats, Madison Booster <coughs> Club, Madison Takedown Club, Junior Football, North Stars Club, Republican Committee Woman, which she always reminded me how proud she was to be Republican Committee Woman, but she was proud to tell me about what we could do better in Madison. So let's remember Jenny Keemer, and Helen Artiglare, two great women that helped define Madison. 
I mentioned a little while ago about our snow out of a meeting a week ago, and Lord knows we've had enough of it, and we're potentially some more. But I want to thank the DPW for the excellent work in keeping the roads clear and safe during the snowstorms. I've heard nothing but praise from our residents, but almost more importantly, because people, I run into a lot of people coming in from neighboring towns, they said, I know when we cross into Madison, you guys are doing a tremendous job. Can you tell them how to do it in my own hometown? So it's, they've been putting a lot of hours in and we truly appreciate it. Um, and we should also, um, I wanna thank them for, by Friday morning after the second storm, <coughs> You could park anywhere in downtown Madison and get to a store without climbing over a snowbank, and that is so important to a vibrant downtown. So thank you, David Main. David Maines, thanks to all the men that have made that happen. And also, as I see Mike Piano out there, we all had our fingers crossed as we had that mon Monday storm and that nice wet snow that was hanging on the branches. And the first thing I thought of, I hope that sun comes out and melts out before the second storm comes around. Well, that second storm came around and that snow was still on there, so we had more snow plus ice, a potential recipe for disaster, a little bit of wind or a poorly maintained system, and we would have had power outages all over the town. Thankfully, there was uh, virtually no emergency repairs that had to be done because of the great work that our electric department does on sunny days so you can survive the stormy days. So, Michael, if you can pass that back to uh, the crew for a great job. And we'll, I'll cover this tonight's meeting. As I mentioned, we're starting a, an hour earlier, so hopefully we'll spend about an hour on the budget discussions. Tonight we'll hear, be hearing from department heads making a presentation. We'll be talking about the accomplishments of 2013 and their goals for 2014 and how it relates to the coming budget. And there'll be a discussion after each uh, budget, um, each department by the council members. And I'll, we'll drift away from the standard um, agenda by allowing the, the residents, after all the departments have presented, we'll take an extra comment period from the residents to ask questions or comment on those presentations. Uh, I will also want to talk about the budget hearing we had on February 1st, which was also our town hall meeting. It was a productive meeting. I was very disappointed by the uh, turnout, and we'll work on trying to get a bet better word out there because I think it was a very positive give and take that we had from the residents and, and the council listening. I also just want to clarify because I did cut short one of the discussions. We talk about give and take. Sometimes it's um, less give, I guess. And I cut off one of the council members. I was determined to get the meeting done by 12 noon and because it was a Saturday morning. And so I apologize if anyone misinterpreted that as that I was trying to cut off the discussion, knowing that we'd have multiple meetings for all the council to discuss the, the budget. We will be hearing from all those council members that didn't have a chance to comment on any of the ideas that were presented there. And the library report. Winter is a great time to visit the library and people have Cabin fever, it's time to go down, borrow material from the collection, spend time reading, studying, and attending the program. Upcoming events for adults include showing of the movie Captain Phillips on February 19th, decoupage fun for adults on February 27th, Libraries Book Club on February 17th, and one-on-one -on -one computer assistance each Tuesday by appointment. And the Adult Services Department can assist the public in attaining copies of federal uh, of federal New Jersey and New York tax forms. The Children's Department offers regular programs for all ages. Later this month, they're featuring Meet the Masters, Read to a Dog, President's Day Pretzel Log Cabins, in, in addition to the regular story time schedule. Further information is available on their great website. Also a reminder, check the library's website, which is madisonnjlibrary.org for information Access in Zinio, which is the new service offering magazines online and the Music Pass program funded by the library and that's funded by the Friends of the Library. And the library will be open for regular hours throughout President's Day weekend. So when you have cabin fever and you can't go out and play in the snow because you've had enough of it, go down to the library. And you're invited to the Friends of Madison Public Library annual benefits scheduled from 5.30 to 7.30 on Saturday, March 8th. And the evening that will be honoring the memory of Lawrence Tabor, 
We all know him as Larry Tabor and William Decker, two very generous benefactors to the library. So please mark your calendars for that. And I've got a little, we have a little presentation we want to show. And then I've got one more. I'm going to step down and make a presentation. <coughs> Turn your attention to the screen. <coughs> We're here at the Shanghai Jazz in, in Madison really to celebrate the CEO Council, which started over a softball game about a year and a half ago, and with that came other CEOs, uh, university presidents, and the government all together to say, what is it that we can do? And we started down a path of how we can bring all these resources together. Mayor, on behalf of the state of New Jersey, congratulations on your innovative programs here in the great town of Madison. I'm here. I'm thrilled to be here. To present their work uh, to the town for what they've done in bringing executives into the community and saying, You're part of us, we're part of you, let's work together. It's a great story about a great town. Uh, we appreciate your community spirit. Congratulations for having a great college and leading it at a time when they needed a leader. I don't think we really thought about what this would be after a year and a half, or thought it would be where, where it is now. Well, the conversation, uh, Mayor Conway, I never would have expected there would be so to do this, and it would be meeting today, and actually we would have some progress in back of us. On behalf of Drew University, um, the university on the hill up there in the forest, <clears throat> which is a very important part of this community, and this community is now a very important part of Drew. ECM members and others have joined to begin to fund the Bull Chief Executive Council for Madison Emerging Leaders Fellows Program. Learning from that executive how he or she got to where they are today, inspiring those <laughs> students and preparing those students for the real world is priceless. Many thanks to Bob, Steve, and Vivian and the, the founders um, for your foresight on developing this council. Um, it's been extremely fruitful uh, to our students. What's really cool with CECM is that these are all coming together to address issues both in, in Madison in terms of uh, developing future leaders, but also in other communities. Uh, in Beach, which of course got you know, hit so hard uh, by, uh, by, by Superstorm Sandy. So I think Madison can really serve as a model for, for other areas and other communities as well. We were the unfortunate recipients of Sandy. Um, but to have a partnership so that people would be with us, you know, through the long we welcome to here. And Madison, and they've been with us. And it's, it's really, we can't thank you enough for all of your help. Today we present the Chief Executive for Madison 2013 Inspiring Leadership Award to Mr. Jim Burnett, Madison Administrator. It's important for corporations to connect with their communities and understand that we have a much broader impact and earning money for our shareholders. When companies get involved in the community, it's an age their their employees and in new ways. Uh, it helps them to build their brands and, and, and very powerful uh, opportunities. When people see the highest executive of a corporation getting involved in the communities, hey, it creates a better climate for all of us. We're happy to be recognized about it, but uh, we're more happy about the results and what we've really achieved. So it's great nice, but we're just going to keep doing what we're doing because it's been good for all of us. We know how busy you are. We value your commitment to all well-being of our community and all of its stakeholders. Thank you for your leadership. I want to thank uh, Quest Diagnostics for putting together that video. It, Barb, come on up a second, please. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, you've had a, wonder, you, if you probably recognize Barb from in the video and presenting the award to um, to Jim, but the, the video just t touches very very little on everything we did in a short time. Um, just in general words, we helped restore a town that still has a long ways to go, and the Chief Executive Council is still working with Union Beach on that. 
We have put together a program working with Junior Achievement, creating tomorrow's leaders, and having sat in on that, I have been uh, amazed at not only what the, the knowledge that the CEOs have to share, their stories, their willingness to sit down, but looking at the high school and college students sitting there like a sponge, just taking it all in, and then going right up to a CEO and, and just talking about what it takes to be a leader. And our, our other thing is helping Madison grow as a business, convincing others that this is the place to be. And when you see this action going on, you know people will choose Madison to come here. And it doesn't happen just because a couple of CEOs and a college president and a mayor sit down. It happens because there's someone behind the scenes making it happen. So we want to, we want to get, have Barb take, you have your own copy now of the state award. This is the 2013 Innovation and Governance Awards from the New Jersey League of Municipalities and the National League of Cities also recognizing Madison for its effort. This is a model that we keep talking about because I'd love to see it happen in other towns. So Barb, thank you so much for all your work on making it work. <laughs> Reports from committees. Health, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Flu shots are still available. Um, if anybody needs one, please call the health department at 973-593-3079. If you're 18 years of age or older and you cannot afford it, uh, please contact Marlene Dolan at the health department. Uh, she has a voucher that is available through the New Jersey Department of Health. Um, two reminders, both uh, began our deadlines were February 7th. If you didn't have your animal license by then, you're going to be assessed a late fee. And also, all retail food establishments should have had their license uh, renewed by February 7th as well. So if you didn't, please take care of it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Catanello. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, unfortunately, the DPW uh, is going to cancel the yard waste pickup at the borough garage scheduled for the 15th. I believe that's what, for Saturday? Because there's no there's, room there's, there with all the there's, snow. Uh, <laughs> there's, no, there's no room and uh, we're expecting some more snow so uh, we won't be able to uh, accommodate that. Uh, I would also like to echo your congratulations, Mayor, uh, to, the, to, the, to the staff uh, for the excellent job they've done in um, uh, in cleanup, all you have to do is uh, drive to some of our neighboring towns or uh, even 52nd Street in Manhattan to see what happens when they don't clean up. Um, so uh, having said that, uh, there is a meeting scheduled for this Thursday, uh, February 13th, in the committee room to discuss sustainable Madison, uh, although we'll have to play that by ear given the, uh, uh, given the weather. Uh, the, the, the presentation is scheduled beyond the uh, municipal and community carbon footprints that have been developed for Madison. Uh, again, that's tentatively scheduled for Thursday. Um, just, you know, just stay tuned based on weather. That's it for me, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Utilities. Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Well, along with DPW, <clears throat> um, the electric department was uh, busy out there. And believe it or not, there were no out outages occurred from this ice and snow. I mean, that, that's just absolutely wonderful. Um, but they did have to replace a pole and a transformer on Greenwood Avenue uh, due to that, that terrible accident that took place. Um, and uh, the pole and transformer was knocked down. Um, they had to clear all the driveways and the paths to all the substations um, uh, for the, from the uh, recent storms. And the continued maintenance on all their bucket and digger trucks have to uh, just keep going. Um, from the water department, the water department was out there, um, you know, uh, plowing along with DPW because they needed the, um, uh, the help. Um, they also helped in the uh, snow removal uh, downtown. And um, Sal says that there were lots and lots of calls, uh, emergency call outs from PSE&G. Um, and one in the well A, the VFD drive for the booster failed. 
So um, that needs to be repaired. And then in well D, the fuel recorder failed, and that is out for repair. Um, they're still doing lots of meter installations and repairs. Uh, that's an ongoing uh, situation. And now New Jersey DEP two-day regulatory update at Rutgers has added more reports and different regulations for water testing. And um, that continues uh, for sale on <coughs> the, um, the yearly basis. That's all, ma'am. Thank you. Public safety, Ms. Bailey. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, Project Community Pride, save the date. May 10th is going to be their fundraiser at Grace Episcopal Church. Uh, and Pfizer has also committed to having their 5K run again this spring um, in honor of Project Community Pride. So they'll be helping um, with that. And the Project Community Pride social workers are collaborating with the Madison Junior School to have a Spanish-speaking parent meeting, and the goals are to begin a dialogue about how the schools are meeting the needs of their students and to give them the tools to become more involved in their children's school experience, even if they don't speak English, which is <coughs> terrific. And then from the fire department, please, they implore you, please, residents, clear your fire hydrants of snow um, that are near your home or business. They those. Close, there are close to 1,000 fire hydrants in town, and if one is within 800 feet of your home, that's your fire hydrant. Um, there's also a recall of dehumidifiers. Links are posted on Madison's Rosenet main webpage, www.madisonfd.com webpage, and on the Madison Fire Department's Facebook page. Over 12 brands are affected by this recall. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Finance Borough Clerk, Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. I, I would like to begin by thanking everyone who has sent suggestions, recommendations regarding our budget. Uh, keep them coming. They're, they're helpful. You, know, you bring a different uh, approach in many cases to how this budget should be um, constructed. So by all means, thank you to everyone who's done that so far. And if you've been thinking about it, I encourage you to do so. The schedule for the budget, as you heard, is tonight we'll be talking to department heads and hearing a review from each of them. On the 24th of February, our very next meeting, uh, we're going to attempt to keep the agenda as, uh, as small as possible so that we can allocate the time to discussing the budget. That, that will be a discussion with the council, and obviously anyone who has comments is, uh, will be welcome to make them at that time. Uh, the, the goal of this effort is to introduce the budget on March 10th. We are, by the uh, laws of New Jersey, required to do so by the end of that week, the 14th. So it's in our, obviously, we want to get it done by the 10th. Uh, I would also like to mention that the Joint Court Committee recently met and approved their 2014 court budget. This was the first meeting attended by our new partner, Morris Township. They seem very pleased. Uh, the, the only downside is uh, there'll be court here every night, and you probably noticed that when you were parking this evening. But the upside is that uh, it's a shared service now that's gone to the point where we hope all shared services go, which is the court costs us very little to run. Um, a new allocation formula has been negotiated with Chatham Borough for sewer processing at the Madison-Chatham joint meeting. And we had a number on the budget last time. That number has now swung in our favor by approximately $60,000. That would be our guess. And a final point uh, I'd like to thank, and I think all of you should thank our tax collector, Fran DeAngelis, and her staff. They managed in 2013 to have a collection rate of 99.46%. It's quite impressive. So thank you very much. Thank you. Community Affairs, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Chamber of Commerce, I'm working on linking up the Chamber of Commerce and the Senior Advisory Group to re-implement the latter's Madison Access Program. This program helps local merchants understand the accessibility issues seniors and others face when shopping and tries to make each location friendlier to those potential customers. And from the DDC, the new Executive Board of the DDC, along with the Public Improvement Committee, which is a subcommittee of the DDC, tasked with identifying, designing, and coordinating augmentations to Madison, has spent a lot of time this month planning the implementation of a comprehensive wayfinding system. The primary objective is to stimulate the
the economic growth of local downtown Madison businesses by implementing wayfinding and directional signage in key areas of Madison. This is intended to bring more visi visitors into the business district. The gateway and wayfinding signage will have authentic, timeless look, which will be expressive of the historic roots of Madison's historic district and the Rose City's past. It contain a fresh and current design. Graphics and text will be clear and legible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any <coughs> communications and petitions? A none received, Mayor. All right, this is the first of our two, uh, actually, as I mentioned before, there will actually be three opportunities for uh, discussion from the public. This one is limited to agenda discussion items and items that are in resolutions that are listed on the consent agenda. The agenda discussions include the MAF quarterly report, which may be tough to comment when you haven't heard it yet, Open Public Meetings Act, which is just an information or informational thing, but you're welcome to public comment on that. You may comment on the, the budget when we have that separate section coming up after the uh, department presentation, so hold off on those comments. Uh, please note that the, there are several ordinances for hearings, and so it is when those ordinances come up for hearing is the time to comment on those, which is the um, ordinance one on uh, salaries, ordinance two, general capital improvement fund, which will in fund the roads program. Uh, ordinance three is the um, amending records for the, the fee for records, and <coughs> that is it. So those, if you want to comment on those, you have to wait until the hearing, if you don't mind. So with that guidelines, anyone wishing to be heard on resolutions or the limited agenda discussions? Sam. Um, well, first, I don't know if you've heard that when I was leaving the house, it was a special report on television. They solved the problem with Woody, I mean, with the Governor Christie and the bridge. What happened was... Uh, that, that's what, it's got to... <laughs> All right, I'll just real quick... A little, little hold off, but you know, I, I think you're going into your uh, Sammy joke night, but I'm not too okay. sure. <laughs> but no, it, it's not, nothing on the agenda. You can't comment on it right now. Okay. Uh, on uh, the next invitation to the public, I can comment? As long as it's appropriate, yeah, but uh, one, yeah. it's very appropriate. Yeah. Uh, resolution uh, 75. What did that cost us? The last one. 75 is the meter reader? I'm sorry, 73. 73. Uh, Sam, it didn't cost us any ta out of tax dollars, it's a step down. Um, settlement, so uh, they had an appeal for 2013, which they dropped, and uh, we made an adjustment to, the ta to their taxes for 2014, but uh, there's no out-of-pocket cost to the borough. Very good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment on resolutions? Seeing none, close this part of the meeting, and we go on to the agenda discussions. First one is the Madison Athletic Foundation quarterly report, which will give us a update on the fundraising activity for the past three months and also what they anticipate for the coming year or coming half year. Brenda, welcome. Mayor, I'll start it off. I worked with uh, Brenda on putting together uh, just a quick summary sheet. This is just for, I don't think you need to really worry about it, but we have a very large Excel workbook which details all the uh, um, budget accounting that's going on in open space. So I've added these pages to that. So it's all just kind of collected in one page, the first page, or one workbook, the first page just has the financing summary of uh, the turf field project just to kind of remind us when we forget how much was financed, what was financed short term, what was financed long term. Uh, the second page is a summary basically based on resolution 179-213, which uh, outlined um, the uh, and refined an agreement with the uh, Madison Athletic Foundation in terms of uh, what they had agreed to fundraise for. And um, with that, I'm just going to pass it off to Brenda. Hi. Um, not much to report to November when we were here last. Um, we have our $100,000 raffle drawing coming up. The tickets are being printed now. So as soon as they're done, we'll start selling them. The drawing is May 3rd at the MRC. Uh, we're working on planning for the spring tailgate event, working on finding a date that doesn't 
of 500 other Madison events happening at the same time. Uh, the annual appeal scheduled for the end of 2013 was mailed in the beginning of 2014. Uh, we're getting, it was mailed two or three weeks ago, so we're starting to get some responses now. We've received about $10,000 so far, including three new M Club donors, which is the $3,500 level. Uh, we received a $25,000 grant at the end of last year, and we are on target to meet our annual goal, um, which is take the 775 divided by five. That's where we're going. <laughs> uh, and we will be present the, um, the funds before the August 15th rollover of the note. A quick, quick little uh, trivial question, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if the tickets, what time is the drawing on May 3rd since that's May Day? Good call, good question. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> seen the ticket. <laughs> yeah. What time is the, the it, they we, want? We pretty, pretty much get done uh, by, by, by one. So yeah, I think they're going to do it, they want to try to get it done uh, soon thereafter, so okay. uh, I'll check the ticket, but does 2 o'clock sound like a reasonable time to that's, do it? Sounds, yep. And, I'm uh, sure I know it's on the ticket, but I, and I have it on my phone, but it's too small for me to read because I'm old. All right. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure there wasn't... Uh, I'm still yep. younger than Jim. Yep. As you talked about, plenty of things going on in Madison. Any other... Pat? And then... Did we, do we or did we authorize that draft raffle? Do we have to? Um, yes, yes, we, we did at the end of everything. last year, yeah. Yep. So thanks for checking okay. Yeah, they, they, they applied for a license... <laughs> November. All right, so it's done. That's fine. Yeah, yep. in October, November. <clears throat> yep. Austrian. Brenda, uh, how much is actually in your account now? Uh, it's the I would number. say um, approximately fifty thousand, maybe. I don't have the exact number. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, it, that would be nice to have because that that we haven't had the past two um, reportings. Um, so that's approximately what's in now. And would mm -hmm. all of that be directed towards? The 155 that you're going to raise by August 15th, or are there other expenses that would come out of that 50? Uh, no, N no other. I mean, it, at this point, no. There's no other expenses because the uh, <clears throat> well, the printing of the raffle tickets, but that will come out of the raffle. So you know, any events that we do, the expenses will come out come of, out of that know. event. Mm -hmm. But also, the what about the fabrication of the plaques and everything plaques. that comes out too? Well, I that comes out of the 50. Well, yeah, yeah I think the. No I, I don't know. Nino has several different accounts, uh, I think, so I think there's more than 50. Uh, we don't exactly know. He, we've asked him for the accounting, but, he, you know, he's been you know quite I, busy. You I, know. Think, I know, but, you know, we're all quite busy, yeah, Rob. I so I think next time, since the Open Space Committee has well, let's, to give let's, an exact let's, number, let, 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 no, me, pa, pa, I think we okay. need an exact number. Fair. Yeah, that's I did just say there are, there's sure. just, more, more appropriately is just the resolution that does call for a... Yeah. Uh, no, I, I yeah, think so, so let's, uh, let's stick with. I yeah. think that one rule should apply to all. So yep. I agree with Ashley in this Thank case. You. Sounds Thank good. Thank you very much. Yep. No problem. Fact, if you could get it together mm -hmm. for that, that's the 50, detail. I'm going to say 52. I may be off by a couple hundred. Dollars. Sounds, sounds like you had better talk to Nino about getting it together. <laughs> yep. We could call him. We could call him. Ben. I was just curious, that estimate of how much you have on account, I assume includes the 10,000 received to date and the three M club members? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. the M Club donors uh, have the option of paying over several oh, yes. years, so it's not, right. you know, we're not getting, I mean, we have gotten check. One of them was a $3,500 check, two of them were not, so. Okay. And the $25,000 grant, are, are you at liberty to tell us who that came from? I am not. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> the anonymous donor. And that, that 25 is in that 50000 Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Carmel? Brenda, so last year you had that your, your first tailgate, mm -hmm. you know, and you guys did relatively well with that, right? Yeah. I mean, is the expectation to do as well or better this yes, year? Because is, I, mean, yeah, I don't know how much you made. The expectation. Yeah, yeah. Um, we always expect to do better. You know, last year it was, given that it was the first time that we did it, it was, uh, <coughs> you know, the weekend that we ended up having it was tough because a lot of people had, uh, there were a lot of college graduations. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, the space, the entire parking lot of the MRC is when you get a couple hundred people in there, suddenly you realize that's huge. <laughs> so it, you know. So how much did you, uh, 
uh, did you guys make from that? I don't know that we ever found that out. I can, I'm going to have to let you know. I don't okay. want to take a guess. I want to okay. say I have a yeah. number in my mind, but I'm not sure so it's completely accurate. So Nino that, that has, you know, a couple of different um, accounts, um, it, it, are you still building your wall? No, there's no. The I mean, wall. the there's wall, one wall is we built. Did, there were there. We were separating M Club and okay. regular donations. Okay, it's all separate. But now they're all. Okay. They're all. They should be all in one account. Oh, okay. So there's. All right. yeah. yeah, the wall's built. Yeah, I know. I know the it's built, built, but I, the letters I, were it, installed. Does it have enough names on it? Like, How many plaques do you have to make? We have. There's 30 up there. Um, I think there are seven or eight more. But we're waiting for a minimum number before we order the plaques. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. We get a better okay. deal if we wait for 25. Well, this is John wait. Morris here <laughs> if he wants to cut us a break. Uh, <laughs> take it. I don't see him in the audience. <laughs> Did pretty well, but you know, 25. So if anyone on council wants to write a check for $3,500. We're, we're pledged over five years. Right, four, four years. I've got a four-year pledge to college for my son, but that's not very good. They already feel your pain with that one. Um, so with the uh, M Club donor, so just to do straight math, you know, if you say you're going to get 10 times that amount, it's you not, may not get it all this year. Right. It could be spread out over five years. Right. Okay. So some that we've got, you know, some of the 30 that we have already, we'll be writing checks this year. For. And then some from prior years will be coming in. Yeah, I understand. Gotcha. All right. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. So I guess we'll. I have a, I have a question. Do you know off offhand, Brent, how much uh, yeah, is hard for Mrs. Uh, Catalanello? You know, uh, yes. 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 How much? How much is due in installment payments for M clubs this year? You don't. I just thought. Um, I know you have it on the spreadsheet. I'm going to say five. Or six. I, I know this year's bigger. Just by, some people front loaded it, so I'm going to say five, five to seven thousand. But you could have warned me you were going to ask that. And we've sent out the payment notices for them. Yes. Yeah, and I took the garbage out too. <laughs> <laughs> and your dinner might be. And your dinner might be cold. I'll just write the questions down. I think I'll, I'll write the questions down. And I'll let Astrid or Ben. Or I'll ask them next time. As opposed, yeah, I'm less hostile. I'll <laughs> okay. Just going to show you how much time we get to spend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah, exactly. Any other questions for Brendan? Um, ben. Yeah. I. I the uh, amount that we're apparently having to pay this year is 133, 134,000, round numbers. Right? So um, at the next time you report, which will be through us a, a, um, a good sense of where you are relative to that number, the only reason I ask is because and I certainly hope that isn't the case, but we're all belt and suspenders characters here, so if we, if if for some reason you weren't able to provide that much money, we'd have to take it out of an account, and it would be helpful to know that well in advance so we didn't have to dig into the budget and at the same time spend money that we think we have free and turns out we don't. Right. Well, I mean, my understanding, too, was that the user fees and field rentals would be covering a portion, well, they all do. the interest, and then, you know, so, I mean, between that and this, there should be more than enough to cover right, the yeah. payment. In the, the three months from now, we'll put us at um, May 12th, yeah, so, be so it'll, be, it'll be after the, uh, your 50-50, so you'll be able to re report on that, and you'll, the tailgate will probably be around there, so, so that should be a, a very... Yeah, we should have yep. a better idea of where we are. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay, at our last meeting, a question came up about um, advisory committees and some issues around the Open Public Meetings Act. So um, Matt was not here, uh, but he put together an opinion. And normally we would handle these things as we train our um, committee leaders, which we'll be doing, we'll have an annual workshop on March 1st. My quick little plug for that at 9 a.m. But I've asked uh, Matt Giacobbe to. Uh, 
share his opinion and um, to answer the question that was brought up. The, uh, as you know, I, I provided you a legal opinion on the Open Public Meeting Act. The Open Public Meeting Act is a law um, that's codified in New Jersey that requires public bodies to convene in an open public meeting uh, with advance notice that the public can attend. And there are various requirements as to when a public body, um, and there are advisory committees that, within the borough that do have to comply with the Open Public Meeting Act. Um, and those are codified committees. So for example, you have planning board, you have open space advisory committee, um, you have the environmental commission, you have the zoning board. There's a number of committees that have to comply with the Open Public Meeting Act and its mandates. Um, and one of those mandates is when you can go into executive session. There are um, a number of uh, means that you can go into executive session. The most commonly uh, referred to ones are to discuss matters of litigation, contracts, including property acquisition, and negotiations. So for example, this governing body, if we are going to go in and negotiate over the uh, price of a purchase of a piece of property, we have the right to tell the public we're going to go into executive session to discuss property acquisition, go into uh, closed session, have that discussion so that we don't reveal or put the governing body in um, a worse negotiating posture. And so those are the, the bases that you go into it. And what happens is, uh, you hear at these meetings, we, we have minutes of our public meetings, and then we have minutes of our closed session meetings as well. And the bodies, these various bodies within the borough have to do the same thing. They have to take minutes of the public, minutes of the closed session. And when the item is no longer confidential, those closed session minutes can then become public and released to the public. And that's something that I can give guidance to the various committees if they have a question of what, whether or not something should be released to the public because it's no longer uh, confidential in nature. So that's just basically the parameters. And if there's a question of an advisory body or a committee uh, that wants to know whether or not they have to comply with the Open Public Meeting Act, they should just give me a call and I can give them some guidance on that. Thank you. Any questions for Matt on that? Right. Well, helps very much. And again, but the executive minutes would be released to us either through verbal dissemination by the yeah, what, what should uh, happen is, is or each of you guys are liaisons to various bodies. So, um, you have Board of Health liaison, Open, uh, open uh, Space Committee. Though that liaison should come back to you in closed session and, and advise the body as to the closed session items that were discussed. So, for example, if you have a, uh, the Open Space Committee is talking about potential property <coughs> acquisition, the liaison would come back to the governing body and say, we're looking at these three properties. What are your thoughts are? That would remain in closed session so that if ultimately you're the funding source and you'll have to come up with the, the ability to make an offer um, and, and acquire the money to make the purchase. So that's how it would work. That's why we have liaisons who then report back to the, the full governing body in closed session. Thank you. And again, uh, to plug the March 1st meeting, 9 a.m., uh, invite has gone out to all committee chairs and we've asked the committee chairs to pass it on to all committee members so it's not just the leadership and I would invite anyone in the public whether even if you don't sit on a committee if you want to come and join us uh, just remember if we see you here we might get you on a committee eventually so uh, watch it but now seriously you'll you'll learn about the Open Public Meetings Act you also learn about how to run effective meetings and all the very interesting do's and don'ts of uh, public meetings r r related to uh, how we have to govern ourselves here. So that's March 1st. And now we'll move on to our budget discussions. As was mentioned, this is the uh, meeting we were hoping to have on um, last Monday, where each of the departments will come up here. Uh, you'll see the council members with big black books, and we'll be going through the books um, in, by sections. Council members, uh, just uh, some a little guidance is, um, as I mentioned, the department head will present their goal, their accomplishments for the past year, the goals for the coming year, and how it relates to the budget. Um, we'll, we can look at their budget line by line, but if we get into min, min, the minutia, we're not going to be completely productive if all of a sudden we're trying to reduce paper clips as opposed to major lines. So please. Let's try to be productive by looking at the major lines and where we, where, where we can make adjustments if necessary. And I, I would just like to 
uh, say a couple things, Mayor, before we bring up uh, Chief Datchison first. Um, uh, additional information will be coming to council before the February 24th meeting. Um, Robert and I will be getting out later on this week, uh, <coughs> refined operating budget and operating surplus numbers. Um, as Ben reported, tax collection um, rates and assessed values for 2014, a summary of revenues, a summary of miscellaneous revenue, um, joint meeting 2014 operating estimates, as Ben mentioned, joint meeting debt and borrowing estimates for 2015. As you know, we're talking about um, borrowing from the Environmental Infrastructure Trust for 2015, and I'm going to work with Robert to see if we can generate a 2015 operating budget and <clears throat> estimate for 2015 um, to have a, a better understanding where capital would fund and the impact of the joint meeting debt. Um, joint court budget and revenues um, are also now going to be uh, fully um, taken into account. We hadn't passed the joint court budget um, during the last uh, round of operating budget discussions at the end of January, so that'll be um, added in there as well. And uh, with that, uh, I wanted to just bring up a couple of questions and answer them real quickly that had been um, asked by a couple of council members ahead of time, I think are just excellent, just general questions to answer, and then we'll try to get each of the department heads in and out. I think your goal is within the seven to 10 minutes. Um, and uh, the first question came about, come, can you explain vehicle maintenance and standby pay? And uh, why would vehicle maintenance have standby? And actually the vehicle maintenance department at the Department of Public Works um, does come in on overtime. They do have the ability <coughs> to do any project that the Department of Public Works um, would need to do on an overtime or standby basis. Uh, Lou Cornyn and his crew um, do an excellent job. Um, another question under uh, the budget for business and corporate development, there was um, an increase of 6,200. What was that? That was basically a transfer from uh, excess funds that were in celebration for public events over to business and corporate development. And what does that cover? That covers expenses that are um, related to the Chief Executive Council and any business or corporate tenancy promotion that we do in town. So when we're promoting to try to fill this Geralda um, site draw the five, that would be an area where if we wanted to put some marketing material or marketing efforts together, we would go for that. Um, budget item, no, uh, budget 180 uh, planning board was increased um, by $20,000. It was asked why did that go up? And um, that was driven by anticipated work um, by our professional planner, Susan Blickstein, for the master plan for GVR redevelopment and for 39 Green Village Road redevelopment. That's the building that burned down. Um, Board of Health, why did legal go up from 7,000 to 13,400? I know Lisa's going to answer that, but I'll answer it for her so she can get home quicker. Um, the Board Secretary and Health Officer have been writing resolutions. Um, it was determined um, with uh, support and uh, agreement with administration that it would be better if the Board Attorney did that, so there's a little bit of an increase in legal fees in the Board of Health for that. Um, those are just some questions. Anytime you have questions ahead of time, um, you can please feel free to forward them to me. If there are questions that happen this evening that we're unable to answer, we'll certainly and happily get back to you later on. With that, we can have... Uh, oh, yeah, Pat. Well, I'll just make the same comment. I sent this to Jim, but, uh, you know, going through this for the first time, there were a couple of suggestions I made to Jim. Number one, it would be helpful by department if there was a summary, or actually uh, sort of a explanation of any of the changes that are dramatic, either on a dollar basis or a percentage basis, so we don't each individually have to send Jim the same questions, because okay. I highlighted a lot of different things I had questions on. The second is it would be very helpful, either on in, in these sheets, on these sheets, or something similar, where we could actually see the dollar value change and the percent change versus um, the proposed budget versus last year's budget and last year's actuals. I mean, that's typically the way I go through a budget so I can quickly spot things and also then have a summary by department. So for each tab in here, a one liner across with that same information. So you don't have to go tab by tab and try to sit there with a calculator and work that out. I think that would be very helpful to all of us going forward. Sounds good. You can do the summary by department, the percentages, that entire budget's driven by the admin system. So we're kind of limited in terms of what that actual printout could be, but in terms of a, a summary by uh, department, easy to do, and in terms of a kind of flagging the large percentage items, we can certainly do that. that does this come out, um, you get a, a digital format of this, or does it just come out on paper? Um, we could get a PDF version of it, but no, it, that's I not don't good. think it's gonna be no. what you're looking for. No, thank you. Okay, start with police, Chief. everyone. Well, we all made it through 2013. <laughs> God. 
I first want to thank Mayor Connolly, members of the council, uh, Mr. Cody, although he's not here, a home recovering, Mr. Burnett, for the opportunity to present the Madison Police 2014 budget. Financially, 2013 was a challenging year, but I feel our department um, provided the level of service that our residents deserve and expect. Some of our outstanding service Services and accomplishments include our child safety seat program, our lobby pillbox program, dare program, toys for tots, numerous food pantry drives, the 200 club award, Morris County detectives award, and the commencement of our accreditation process. In 2013, we combined with the Florham Park and East Hanover Police Departments uh, to combine our emergency services units. Uh, this shared service agree agreement will greatly expand our resources uh, should the likelihood of an event requiring their deployment uh, happen. I am also very proud to say that Madison has recently been named one of the safest communities in New Jersey. This is by the efforts of all of the first responders within Madison, including the Madison Police Department, the Madison Fire Department, and the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Two of my top goals for 2014 will be to su substantially complete the accreditation process and to open dialogue on ways to further reduce costs with our law enforcement partners through the sharing of equipment and or resources. Although this year will be no different than the last, we are presenting a relatively flat 2014 budget, which depicts a slight decrease from 2013. I do see increases in areas that I feel important to our department and to our community. In 2014, I will request added resources and personnel which have diminished over the years through attrition. In recent months, we have seen the retirement of two senior sergeants and anticipate the retirement of another senior patrol officer. Uh, not including the senior patrolman, our current staffing will be at 26 sworn officers. I would request two additional officers in 2014. We have recently hired three officers to replace the retired sergeants and the senior patrol officer. I thank you for your immediate response in hiring these officers who will replace the recent vacancies uh, once they are fully trained. In 2012 and slash 2013, due to manpower constraints, I was forced to disband the traffic unit and the alcohol and narcotics task force. Uh, once adequately staffed, I, I plan on reinstituting the uh, traffic unit immediately and hopefully um, increase the uh, number so I can reinstitute the alcohol and narcotics task force on a very limited basis. I also request the purchase of three patrol ve of three vehicles in 2014. These vehicles will be replacing two patrol vehicles and one detective vehicle. Two vehicles were replaced in 2013, one from the operating budget and one from the capital budget. As you are all well aware, police vehicles operate in very harsh conditions around the clock. Our fleet is ever aging, increasing repairs and maintenance costs. We currently have 19 vehicles with a combined mileage of over 1 million miles. We currently have one of our four wheel drive vehicles out of service due to transmission problems. Uh, this particular vehicle has excess of 95,000 miles. This is the type of repairs that are required when the vehicles aren't replaced on such a uh, frequent basis and the mileage increases. Uh, since then, we have instituted an hourly fee for police vehicle usage when utilized for road work and outside contractors. This re revenue will be used to purchase future emergency vehicles, reducing the impact on our municipal budget. In 2014, one vehicle is requested from the general budget, one from our special duty account, and one from the capital budget. In 2014, I also plan on implementing certain operating systems which will increase the efficiency in the police department as well as our joint municipal court. One system I plan on implementing is the e-ticketing system, which is a platform for the electronic generation of summonses, which will save time, increase efficiency in both the police department as well as the municipal court. This system will, re will reduce time spent on summons generation, docketing, data input, and payment processing for our municipal court. This is why I have asked for an increase in count 240-212. New duty weapons will also be purchased in 2014 with little to no cost to the Madison taxpayer due to the generosity of Mr. Peter Esposito through his estate. <coughs> Our current weapons are in excess of 15 years old and are in need of replacement. We will purchase the same weapon which will make ease of training and any cost concerns. 
new MDT computers will be replacing our agency in-vehicle computer, <coughs> computer system, which has become prone to malfunctions and failures. This replacement will be paid partially through our forfeiture fund account, which will once again decrease the implications on our 2014 budget and ultimately to our taxpayers. In conclusion, the Madison Police Department is committed to providing the best possible service to our community while keeping the costs as low as feasibly possible. Our officers are devoted to this community and so am I and have been, our officers have been since the year 1890. There is a cost of doing business as it relates to public safety, but I feel this budget is as lean as possible without cutting any further services. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Jim. Uh, Chief, just to confirm, um, the budget between the capital budget, the special outside duty trust, and the operating budget includes the three uh, vehicles that you're looking for. And so there's no additional request than what's already been baked into the budget and baked into the capital for that. Um, and uh, the other items that you asked for, the only thing that's above and beyond what had been baked into the budget and uh, advanced by administration was the request for the additional staff, correct? That's correct. Okay, so um, uh, Raymond, Mr. Cody and I had advanced a budget that did not include additional staff. Um, Chief had requested it, but we, um, <coughs> administration did not include additional staff in the budget here, so any discussion in that is going to have an impact on salaries and operating line items in the overall budget. Questions or comments? What Rob? would the cost for the two staff be? What's the cost? That uh, well, <clears throat> the the cost um, under the current guide, it's starting salary is forty thousand, I believe. Um, so you're talking about forty thousand plus um, incidentals, health benefits. So you're probably talking fifty-five thousand dollars per officer. Times two, yeah. Um, we we are in negotiations right now with them, so that it could it could change. But I would say that's probably a pretty safe number, fifty-five thousand. To sixty thousand per new officer uh, for all their fringe benefits and salary. And you, the three three new cars you want? Yes, sir. They're you're so you're taking three out of service, putting three in. It's not yes, any I can only have one four wheel drive that's out of service. So you would it'd be snowstorm. That, that's it, the vehicle has ninety five thousand miles, and I really can't see uh, putting three three thousand dollars in the vehicle that has ninety five thousand miles on it. So what would be one, in that category. one four wheel drive and two standard cars? Uh, I would purchase uh, three all wheel all wheel drive vehicles, the uh, Ford Interceptors. And, and the, um, I'm sorry, just no, one go, more. Keep, the, keep um, going. So uh, school crossing guards are in your budget and you have them in for no increase in pay? Correct, yes. That's correct. And Jim, when I asked you before about uh, the approximate cost for a one dollar per hour raise for a crossing guard you said around fifteen thousand is that still accurate that sounds right okay so i mean to me uh they've gone quite some time with no pay increase um they have uh, uh i believe that they perform uh sort of like the first line of defense against you know we don't live in a safe world there are people that want to do harm to our children and uh, i think it's time we reward these people uh, with a small raise, uh, I would say no more than $2 an hour. I don't know how, what the council thinks of it, but since we're talking about the police budget, I, I would like to propose that. Um, I guess we'd come to around $30,000. Um, I just think you know, they haven't had a raise in, what, six or seven years. Uh, they perform an invaluable service to the community. They protect <coughs> our kids, um, and I think it's time. Thank you very much, Chief. Uh, Bob? Can I, can I Bob, just... Bob, Bob, and then okay, you're, you're, you're after Bob, Carmela. Didn't see you. No worries. Your automobiles that you're replacing, are they on a normally a rotating cycle? Let's say every couple of years you replace them, or is it just based on mileage? And more frequently. We, yeah. we would usually, you know, before this economic crisis, we usually would replace mm -hmm. three vehicles per year, but that's been drastically cut down, so which increases the mileage per right. vehicle. We're holding on to them longer which increases the mileage and maintenance costs. No, I know when I was an auxiliary, you guys used to put me in the beater, which I got to <laughs> thank you for that one. Uh, no, but I agree, they, they're due. Thank you. Carmela? Yeah, I, I want to go back to uh, Rob's question about the school guards. Um, I, I remember having a conversation uh, about this, and uh, there, was, um, there was talk at the time that 
uh, like Federation was getting their increase and whatever, that it was going to be kind of across the board, you know, um, you know, for the non-union people as well. And I always consider them non-union. And I don't, I thought that that's what was going to happen, but obviously not. All part-time employees, their salaries um, are adjusted by council on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the um, part-time employee. Uh, department heads, full-time employees would be the ones, and other uh, confidential secretaries would be uh, the employees that I think were being discussed at that point in time in terms of non-union employees okay, that would right. receive a 2% increase. One of the uh, issues with um, the crossing guards, and this is not an issue just in Madison, this is an issue statewide, and it's not only an issue with crossing guards, it's an issue with uh, special police officers in shore towns and employees in shore towns, is that um, when they're not working, they collect unemployment, and that costs the town over $50,000, right. um, and the vast majority of our unemployment claims um, are coming from the crossing guards, and um, it's uh, a challenge on our side because they're... Uh, Yes, the, you could say the thirteen, sixteen dollars and thirty-one cents may be may be underpaid, but they're also getting paid for time that they're not being there because they're submitting these claims. Um, other towns have been successful in encouraging the crossing guards to not um, file for unemployment claims. It's a little, little bit of a challenge for us to to, to make a, a statement like that. Hey, we'll give you a raise if you don't um, yeah. file unemployment claims. You can't really say that. So, um, but the challenge the challenge is that, and and it's a little um, to some. It, it seems a little odd because when you're hired as a crossing guard, it's pretty much assumed that, you know, Christmas break you're not going to be working and summertime you're not going to be working, yet they continue to file unemployment claims during those times. And I, I don't know the state has been looking at that, and I would love to... There's, there's actually legislation that's been proposed <clears throat> to change that, but uh, so far it hasn't gotten traction. And, and the, the difference is, is if you're a school employee, um, school employees, the, the, the law says that a school employee, when they have off those breaks, they have the expectation of reemployment following the break. So you leave in June, you have the expectation of coming back in September, therefore you don't qualify for unemployment. Crossing guards cannot work for a school system, <coughs> they have to work for the municipality under the direction of the chief of police because they're directing traffic. There's not, the legislation doesn't track. So that's what they're trying to do. That with that and uh, and lifeguards at the shore. So j just a thought on this because the thirty thousand is an a annual two dollar an hour cost. That includes the overtime too, right? <coughs> that includes um, the oh, or the, the unemployment. Uh, Social Security. Okay. Yeah. That, that that does include that does not include that unemployment. Include no, it, it was it was a rounded up number. It was okay. going to be about twelve thousand dollars. Actually, about eleven thousand dollars. But then okay, then, then a okay. Lozenge in my mouth. Um, but then the costs of uh, Social Security and the okay. like, we're going to round it okay, up. Okay, so, so that but, was a fully loaded cost. There. And it's a full, a full year cost. So if we, if we looked at it, attacking this and budgeted it for starting the new school year, along with the fact that, you know, hope, hoping Trenton tackles the uh, unemployment issue, maybe that's the way to uh, get it going. Yeah. Carmela and then Ben. Yeah. I think it'd be worthwhile if um, we asked, like Linda Sawyer, to take a look at, you know, what other towns are are getting because I've had conversation with some of these people, and they claim that you know other towns are paying a lot more or whatever. Um, so I'd, I'd be interested in seeing that, and then when you know, as the mayor says in September, um, you know, we can kind of revisit that at, at that point. Can do a salary yeah. survey. Um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I I think, think we'll be somewhere in the middle, maybe a little on the low side of the middle, um, compared to some of our neighboring communities. But I'll also check on their uh, unemployment claims as well. Ben? So if I understand this correctly, and I just want to make sure I do, <clears throat> if you're a crossing guard and you give up the ability to apply for unemployment insurance in order to be made whole, you'd have to increase the budget for crossing guards by about 50000 You can't. You can't you have can't. them give up yeah. legally. No, 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 I yeah. understand that. You can't say to them, I'll give you an increase. I'll make you a whole if you... Correct. Yeah, I understand that. But I'm just um, trying to get a handle on, on the numbers. So they would be whole at 50000 
be a significant it, it, salary increase on an hourly yeah, rate right. to it, make them whole for the weeks that they are filing for unemployment. Thank you. Pat? Um, one question, Chief. I was looking at the um, <clears throat> overtime budget, and last year it started out at 300000 um, it looks like it ended up uh, being 325. This year, it says the budget's 260. So, two questions: one, is that achievable? And two, if you were to get additional staff, is there any trade-off in overtime versus having uh, full-time staffers on board? Yes. Yes, it will. It will reduce overtime. Right now, when we're, our squads are short, we have to call in additional manpower, which is a time and a half. Has anyone done any type of study to see what that would actually? <coughs> translate to so in other words you know if we hired additional staff instead of it costing us 40,000 or 50,000 plus the burden mm -hmm. um, what's the what's the potential overtime offset for that that would be helpful. <coughs> okay we can look into that thank you all right so uh, any other questions for the chief I think just to, to wrap up so things that uh, to look at is the crossing guard issue and potential new staff. So we'll kind of put that in the hopper list and as we work through the budget. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Health Department. Lisa. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully everyone's staying healthy and got their flu shots. If not, Marlene is right there. She's more than happy to give it to you. She's got them right here tonight, she right? She always has flu shots <laughs> somewhere on her. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> okay. Um, so I handed everyone um, a very brief uh, summary. Uh, some of the goals that we were able to meet in 2013, um, we were uh, able to expand our technology which we we're really excited about, um, using a uh, SharePoint system, using more web-based systems. We've been increasing our web pages uh, for Madison and our contract communities, which has really uh, helped us solidify and improve our relationships with all of our contract communities. We've also designed in-house satisfactory conditional and satisfactory placards. So we're allowing, we're doing in-house printing, which allows us to reduce some of our printing costs uh, which we are also going to use once we get uh, fully loaded on our tablets, our inspectors will be able to print on site uh, all of our placards for our restaurants. Uh, the inspection complaint system is not completed as of yet. I believe we're supposed to beta test it in the next month. We're hoping to have that up and running. Uh, once we have it beta tested and fully implemented, uh, we are going to work with some of our contract communities that they'll be able to upload their information through the web based program so that our inspectors will have everything on their tablets, which will increase our efficiency. Uh, one of our greatest successes has been our internship program. We have uh, increased our master's and bachelor's level interns as well as our William Patterson nursing students. And we were able to equate to almost one full-time employee in our um, department over the course of the year, came to 0.87 specifically. Um, and the programs and the projects that these students are working on are continuing to assist us moving forward into this year. Uh, we did become a vaccine for adults provider, which has allowed us to um, give otherwise costly vi vaccines such as Zostavax, if anyone's familiar. Usually it'll cost you well over $200. We are now, if the insurance, if you're underinsured or uninsured, we're able to give that for a $15 fee, which makes it much more affordable for our residents. Um, some of the goals we're looking for forward to in 2014 is, as I mentioned, we want to continue increasing our technology. Not only do we want our inspection reports uh, on a web-based program so that they can go with the inspectors and print it on site, we're also hoping to get a complaint module put out of this where it'll connect our animal control, um, our rabies complaints, animal bites, as well as any inspection complaints or um, public health nuisance complaints. We'll be able to upload it right into these tablets, assign it to our inspectors, and they'll get it in real time on the road. Uh, we are looking also at creating a strategic plan for the health department. Um, including creating a vision and mission statement with the potential of applying for national accreditation um, in a future 
years, probably two to three year plan. Um, we're looking at securing grant funding this year to assist us with expanding current programming. And we're hoping to utilize the county health improvement plan that should be completed by mid-year um, to conduct a community level health assessment to guide our department in program development to address our priority health needs of the community. And we continue to seek out potential contract opportunities um, to continue building the infrastructure of our department. Uh, one of the other documents I have enclosed is not only our anticipated revenue, but the last page is a basic uh, comparison. We know that there have been questions at times on the uh, feasibility of having a standalone health department in Madison versus contracting out for services. So I did a comparison of the net cost to Madison, which is $184,818 approximately with the budget as is today, with Springfield, which is a comparable community that's one of our contract services. And if you look at it, based on the expenses that we provide and our income, like I said, our net cost is approximately 185000 to Madison, but that includes having the department here, which is in charge of property maintenance, housing, uh, grease trap inspections, sheltering and emergencies, uh, licensing, registrar services. Um, so if you compare it with Springfield, they have additional staffing that does that, and their net cost is $182,500. So uh, for about $2,300 difference, you're having a health department that is in your community providing the services um, on site and the additional services. Uh, I know there were a couple of questions. Jim discussed the increase in the attorney. Um, we had an increase in the OT line, which is actually additional hours for part-time staff members and or overtime for our two full-time REHSs. Um, the increase request came from the fact that we have implemented a food handlers course, which in the um, profit loss comparison, we bring that money back in. It's just not shown. It has to go out in the inspectors, and then you see it in the income. Last year, we had brought in, let me just double check my number. Uh, we brought in, I think, over $3,000 in uh, income for food handlers courses. So it more than compensates for that increase in the OT. And we had an increase of emergency calls. Every community is different year to year, uh, but of course, um, some communities have other more issues. So between Madison and our three contract communities, there was an increased need in uh, emergency on-call services. Oh, and the last one was um, gas was added back in to more accurately reflect the true cost to the department versus being a zero line. Thank you, Lisa. Jim. And, and I would just say everything that Lisa covered is is covered within the budget that um, was submitted that's in the book here and um, folded into the summary of revenue and appropriations that was presented in January. Bob? This isn't a question, but more of a comment. Okay. Um, you didn't talk about something enough, which is the benefit of having you in town. Um, with the lovely weather we've had over the last few years, and if this mayor jinxes me again with <laughs> another storm on in November, um, having you here saves the town money on the back end that they don't even realize. And it goes beyond just the convenience. Your staff is here, you are on call, you provided more than enough emergency services to staff shelters and help people. So that's not reflected in these numbers during your presentation. Thank you. Ben? Um, a, a small question. Is animal control in here? In your it's budget? Not in the health department one. The animal control is a separate budget. Um, I do know that there's a line, um, I believe Jim does have it, the animal trust. Uh, the animal trust functions uh, in, in two ways. All the monies we collect from our licensing and mm -hmm. um, late fees goes into the animal trust account. So actually one of the things we did implement last year was um, all of the animal related overtime costs are now coming out of the animal trust account, which is a um, legitimate expense to come out of there. So we have our 
licensing, our syringes, our dog tags, all of the OT costs come out of there, as well as our contract with our animal control agent. Um, I believe, so I believe the one line says borough contribution, but basically what it is is the monies come from the animal trust mm -hmm. into the borough's line item for the Edmonds purposing. Self-funding trust account. Self-funded, okay. And it's Milburn, right, that we use? Yes. We use Milburn, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Rob? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. You guys do a great job. Thank what, you. Um, I remember asking, um, I forget what the guy's name was. The, um, James? The, James? It, what? James? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the guy. Um, um, <laughs> it's been a long couple of years, man. Um, what, what sort of resources do you think you need to get that, and do you think it's feasible to get us down to a zero health cost for Madison? And is that something you, you would recommend? So, I mean, if we added, mm -hmm. you know, more staff and we went out and got more contracts, do you think it's feasible to get down to zero? Do you think we're happy I don't know that are? you will ever get it down to a zero because, again, that's why I did this comparison right. chart um, because if you have a standalone health department that just serviced Madison, you would be probably expending close to, close to 250 to 275,000 separate of it, right. um, just for the general services they provide. Right. So that's why um, $184,000 net cost is actually wonderful. As right. you can see, what Springfield puts out to have us as their contracted and then the additional services that are required to be addressed. Right. Um, so I don't know that a zero cost out would ever be feasible. Do you um, think we can, do you think if we added in, in incremental resources we could lower the cost more? Probably. Um, there's probably opportunities to generate additional revenue. Um, the food handlers courses, for example, the more communities we have that are attending the courses, the more money we're going to generate in on that. So yes, you'll have some of the overtime costs, but again, the generation of revenue from having additional communities would absolutely assist with that um, you know, net loss or net profit that we're looking at. Um, but to have an overall zero budget, I don't know that we would ever be able to, to do that. And I don't know, because again, you increase staff, yeah. you're increasing yeah. you know, salary and wage, you're increasing benefits. You know, even if you have all part-timers, then you're also worrying about additional hours to cover those staff members, totally emergency call-outs. But do you think it's something we should look at? Trying to, not, not to get to, obviously, we're, we're, forget about that, but. I, mean, I think moving forward, depending on, again, it also has to come up to the makeup of your community. You know, we could, have, we could bring on another community that has six retail food establishments and seven schools that have to be audited to go on a quick version. Could my inspect two inspectors handle six more retail food establishments? Absolutely. No problem. Okay. Um, could the nurses handle the audits for seven more schools? Probably. But then you go to a town where you're now looking at two schools and 75 more retail food establishments. There's no physical way for the staff members that I have in this point to cover that. So again, it has to be based community, community, what is their makeup? And so would then, we then need to bring in a part-time staff person. Um, the other component I would add to that is our health educator. We have a part-time health educator that covers all four communities. Um, my background being in health education, I work with her on that, and that's the other reason why we had this big goal of bringing on interns who were able to offset and assist Christine and I to give the health education services we're required to provide. Thank you very much. Ben? One other quick one, just to, to put this in per person terms. If I take the 185, the 184,000 mm -hmm. change, and divide by the approximately 16,000 residents of Madison, mm -hmm. we're talking $11 plus for each one. Is that correct? I guess $11 per person per capita, yeah. Yeah, I mm -hmm. recall a few years ago looking, the state average was closer to 16. Does that sound about right? The state average is closer to 16, and the national average is actually $42 per capita recommended really? by the National Association of uh, County and City Health mm -hmm. Officials. All right. Well. New Jersey's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Pat? And actually, Ben hit on something. I think it, it, it's good, actually, to see the comparison. I actually looked up Springfield is actually slightly smaller than we are, so on a per capita basis, we're getting a better deal. But it does point out something, I think, in general, for budgeting purposes that would be also helpful to us, which is do a comparison for as many of the departments in here that have 
surrounding comparable towns, what it costs us to do the job on a per capita basis and, and compare ourselves to other people to see are we doing better or worse. The places where we're doing better, you know, that's great. The places where we're maybe behind the curve, take a look at those operations and see why are other towns able to maybe do it a little bit cheaper than we are. Good. Thank you. I wish I, I hope I've never had you as a professor. A lot of homework to give it out here. <laughs> no, it's, it's good stuff. It's a lot of money. <laughs> Any other thoughts on health? Well done. I think we're so there's basically as is looks good. DPW, David Maines. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the accomplishments that DPW had for year 2013 was we started out with Hurricane Sandy. We got that all cleaned up and we distributed all X number of yards of mulch to all the borough residents. Last year, we also completed a new generator over at Candlewood with the sewer department and working with Bob Vogel. We also got uh, 28 Walnut Street paved and striped for the seniors because the parking lot was in very despair and had to be done. Uh, we also <coughs> painted all, all the bikeway paths all through the center, all around town because the, the, bike, the bikeway stencils were all faded in that. And I had two summer help and they did that all summer long. We uh, also were working on upgrades. We just put a new grinder pump over at North Street Pump Station, which we've been working on for numerous years and we're going to be going on all, uh, for the next few years. And we have Bob Vogel and Sal, Sal and Tommy and them worked on all of the repairs that had to get done to all the wells because there was an ordinance about $150,000 where there's a lot of repairs that had to be done to all the wells, treatment plants for repairs that had been put on the side that had to get done. And then uh, we had a, I just had to put a new roof on uh, the garage last year from Hurricane Sandy because that's, um, uh, the wind did a nice number to it. Now, the goals for 2014 are for the DPW and my departments are we are in the midst of working on it, installing a generator at Treadwell Avenue and upgrading that station up there with the sewer department and Bob Vogel. Our mill and overlay program, we're, talking, we're uh, shooting to do two, at least two streets this year through the capital pro uh, projects. And uh, the third one here, I want to thank everybody for hiring the two new men I have and for replacing the part-time uh, employee here at the building. And then we're, uh, so we're going to be installing a new generator at well, uh, the water treatment plant down at Well E at, and behind the plaza. That, thing, that has to be replaced. <clears throat> now we're in the midst right now of uh, getting prices on doing that there. And <laughs> we're working on doing some staffing in that there during the course of the summer for cleaning out the woods like behind the library, Summerhill Park, to pull the stuff out that from the hurricane that looks very, that's just hanging there. And it looks very, it could be dangerous to kids if they're playing in there. So we gotta do something with that. So we're gonna try and use some summer help and slap there working together to pull it to, up to the top, pull it to the road where we can get people to chip it up. And then also, uh, we're working now in regards to North Street, we're gonna see about working with Mike Piano and Bob Vogel and restoring new pads for transformers and for, uh, for all the electric down there at North Street Pump Station. And now the guys are down there doing a lot of painting and repairs as they go on. And we're also doing more repair work at Candlewood Station right now for uh, some dry pit submersible pumps we're putting in. Upgrading all, them, all, upgrading all the new pumps, take, doing away with drive shafts. Because that's a very hazardous thing if you have to work around them. <clears throat> so, and that's our goals for 14 and uh, the budgets that I do have here, which I have 11 of them here, okay, if they want, if Bob Mayor tell me how you want to do it, I, the budgets I have here, I can function with all the budgets we have here. Now, you tell me how you want to work these, because some of them have increased a little bit here and there, because I work with supply and demand. I have to supply a service to all the residents in Madison, and that's where I do have control over some things, but some things I do not have control over on uh, what inflation is. We do use the co-ops as much as we can. So in, in terms of the budgets that David covers, it's kind of a pretty big section in the middle. It's buildings and grounds, it's DPW, it's sewer lining maintenance, safe tree management board, vehicle maintenance has three accounts, uh, garbage, water field, which is 5501, that's Sal and his crew, uh, parks and uh, fuel. 
So David deals and manages with, I think that's 11, right? I think yes, that's all there right. is. And so, then you got natural gas and a de yeah, fuel in there. Yep. So any that um, particular with any major changes we should take a look at that uh, before, otherwise we can just, uh, if there's council members that have particular questions on any of those departments. And Bob? Oh, sorry. Yes, David, I just have one just general question in terms of your vehicles and the maintenance. They took a pretty good beating during Sandy. Yes, they did. Are you putting them on a rotating schedule now? Or on a rotating schedule. I rotate my vehicles anywhere between, uh, it used to be a 10-year rotating basis. We're going 12 to 15. So we're trying to keep them on the road as lo little longer than normal. So this way we get more life expectancy out. Yeah, do you think 12 to 15 is pushing it a bit, given it's the... a little bit, but as soon as they get there, because I have some big pieces of equipment under the capital that we're, you've, uh, we've already went over in that, that I have to replace. And that's the way I have to start there. And next year we'll start on doing the pickup trucks and uh, small dump trucks. Yeah. Plus my only right, equipment that has to be replaced because they're at a 20 year replacement and they're going like 21, 22 right now. And that's the big ticket items. Right. Plus my only concern would be if you push them too long, it becomes a safety issue. Yeah. I wouldn't want to see you do that. Well, if they become a safety issue, I park them and I lock, I lock them out. Gotcha. We do not use them. Good. Thank you, David. Rob, Rob and then Ben. This may be a ridiculous question, but what did we spend on pothole repair last year? What do you have budgeted for this year? I mean, well, it's, this it's, you know, there's some big ones out there. That's a good question. <laughs> not, not a ridiculous <laughs> one. It's a good question. Okay. Last year, pothole repair, we spent on average maybe about, say, $10,000. This year, we're looking about almost triple that because it is horrible. And you've and got that, that? That's in your... That's yes. Yes. That's what we have there. Actually. My That's question what, is somewhat related. I was going to ask you if you're still comfortable with your salt, sand, and brine number. The salt, sand, and brine, we are still holding good there because we had, see, last two years, we really haven't had a lot of snow issues. Mm -hmm. And last year, we had more of a hurricane issue than salt. And that was, so we had money. Right. When it came into 13, I had a, a good chunk of money left over. I filled everything up, and we still had some money left over where we were filling everything up, and we're still using. We just started using 2014 money uh, just two weeks ago. Oh. <coughs> we got, and I made a, I made one big order there for 800 ton, and I still got more than half of that money left over. Pat, you know, I have a question about the salary, but I'm going to ask Jim separately about it. Okay. Carmel? Just out of curiosity, David, so like how much brine and, and salt have you put down? We have put out right now about 15,000 gallons of brine, and we put out, let's see, 10, uh, 23, about 2,500 ton of salt so far this year for this season. I thought the well, town we've had a, light, a lot of ice situations. That's why we yeah, have to put that a, much out. Yep. You sit down and really think of, we've had nothing but ice for the first Four or five storms. That's all we've had. Yep. And we had to put it out. So, on the, and we've we've heard the uh, benefit. Spot. Any other questions? So it sounds like right now we're, um, for the most part, on the DPW various departments. We're in good shape, and see what comes up. But at this point, we're good. All right, Michael, electric. Good portion of 2013 saw us cleaning up remnants of our friend Sandy. Pretty much the infrastructure had been has been uh, reconstructed as to how it was pre-storm. Required us to remove quite a bit of debris that was piled up from the storm, uh, hard pole hardware, transformers, things of that nature, and poles that were <coughs> cut into pieces. Uh, we replaced and reconstructed poles at the corner of John Avenue and Station Road caused by one of our uh, contractors that was doing work for the borough, happened to pull out and <laughs> some damage for, that we, weren't, we hadn't anticipated. Our goals for 2014 are pretty much uh, begin, we'd like to begin the installation of the medium voltage switches 
and pad mount switches along Madison Avenue. The switches have finally been shipped to us. And the installation of desk and breather systems at, on both tap changers at uh, the Alice Chalmer units at James Park substations. And the installation of oil circulation system at the two Westinghouse units at James Park substation. Our capital, uh, we want to replace uh, battery banks at both substations, which are approximately 18 years old or due to be changed out. Placement of one of our uh, pickup trucks. Purchase two transformers for the North Street pump station. And our operating budget is pretty much the same as it's been. All right, Jim. Michael, can you talk about, um, as I know we talked about this a little bit, and Councilman Catalanello had a question on uh, electric utility capital. Um, we don't really dedicate a lot of money annually to the electric utility capital budget because as you and I were talking about, so much of what you put back into the field actually comes out of your operating budget. So I, tr I try to that? do a lot of repairs and things that we can do out of my operating budget. How much do you think? How much you do you think up the year, capital? You I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I, I well, guess my concern with that was, you know, we had a close call a couple of years ago with some of those big old, you know, transformers. Uh, we, we lucked out. You know, and I think it's important uh, during the capital portion, you know, I, you know, do you think that there's a minimum amount, either a minimum dollar amount or a minimum, say, percentage? of the surplus that you would like to see set aside for capital? Uh, that would be uh, prudent to do. I, I thought that's the, over the years we had been steadily increasing that <coughs> out, outside of my special requests. Yeah. yeah I mean, so a couple of the years of zeros and yeah, then we were scary, back. Yeah, there's some scary years there. And, and you know, so we were just, we, it was last uh, a couple, couple weekends ago, or two weekends ago, just, so that's where it came up because you know it seemed like. No, that would be wise to do. Yeah. We've got about six hundred and seventy thousand right now in electric utility capital, and there was a discussion: should it be two hundred thousand a year or more that we set? Like five percent or something, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I think that's right. there, the there is one transformer that we are closely monitoring at James Park mm -hmm. substation. Uh, didn't anticipate that, but there is something happening with that. But we're keeping close tabs on it. One think, of the big ones. One yeah. of the big yeah. ones. Cost if we had to replace. You're probably looking close to a million dollars. A million dollars, yeah. Yeah, we lucked out a couple of years ago. We just there was a problem with the oil. I remember that. Yeah, so. right. There is an issue with it, and, and we're monitoring it closely. And if we can correct the issue, it's not going to cost a million dollars. If if we lose, if we don't monitor it closely yeah. and it gets away from us, obviously there there's, could be a catastrophic failure. Robert, you had something to add? You step up to the lectern. Can I just ask him a question while we're on transformers? I'm, we had this conversation at, at um, the uh, meeting mm -hmm. on, on Saturday <coughs> about whether or not we should just be putting 200000 in and whatever. And, and Rob brought up the transformers, and I understand that the very large transformers cost us a lot of money, so we pay attention to it. But when you, you see what DPW is doing, and you know, uh, the pole on Greenwood Avenue that took down a transformer. I mean, those little transformers are just as important because it's right, what's keeping I, the, but does that come out of operating? Yes. Okay. And you keep enough on hand now because you have the facility to do that? Since Sandy, I've increased my stock okay. significantly. But that, that all that comes is, out of operating, so of operating. we don't have to be concerned then. A uh, typical okay. pole mount transformer is probably around $1,500. Okay, Robert, you had something to add, and then just want to make sure Jim provides any more information we need. or, or we. Rob, I just wanted to address your issue. Uh, fr from the mid-90s to about 2007, we were uh, budgeting anywhere between 400 to a high of $800,000 of electric utility capital. We right. built a substantial pool. Uh, Michael uh, <coughs> increased and enhanced the, the, the distribution system. When the Detroit Edison contract came on board in, in 2008, we had to cut way back on the capital in order to generate the surplus. 
That, and that's the reason why we went to zeros and 100. Yeah, no, no, I mean, look, yeah. I, I think, I think you, do, you run a tight ship. I mean, you know, no doubt you do a great job. It's just I know that um, some, of the, you know, some of the stuff, they don't make them anymore, <laughs> you know, and they're expensive to replace. So I just wanted to make sure that if we had something, uh, regardless of our good efforts, you know, uh, uh, of maintaining them, and, and we do, and Pat, as a new guy on council, I recommend you hang out with Mike one day, and he'll take you all around and show you all the cool things. Uh, you know, don't uh, worry. Yeah, you know, um, uh, you know that that in case something goes wrong, you know, we're we're ready to go. And I just think it's a. Okay, uh, Ben. And, and, and I'm what? sorry, Ben. Go ahead. Oh, that's, that's okay. Go ahead. If in fact we were to lose one of these transformers. Sometimes it's not wise to buy a brand new one. You may want to send that unit out and have it refurbished because they don't engineer them the way they used to engineer them. That could yeah, come in at a, at a lesser yeah. number. So. Ben, ben and then Pat. Right now we have 600,000 set aside in capital. Yeah. So, for example, if we had to do this, replace this transformer, We'd have to take four hundred thousand out of out of surplus, correct? Uh, Two thousand fourteen budget has two hundred thousand in it for electric capital, so that gets us to eight seven. Eight hundred. So All right. There, so All right, but I mean, if we had a, a shortfall, <clears throat> the, the source is obviously surplus. Yep. Emergency appropriation, yes. And if you know, if I remember, the the years of the zeros were not just the higher contract, but at that point we had quite a amount sitting in yeah, electric capital, so it was. Uh, well funded, it probably went maybe a little too long without being funded again, so we'll never get back on track. Pat? Uh, yeah, one quick question on the personnel budget uh, page. There's something called adjustments. It's, for Mike's, it's 36000 It appears in, on some of these, not all of them. What is that? Robert, you want to answer that? It's the second to last item on Mike's uh, personnel budget, right about part-time meter readers. Pat, those are step increases uh, that are in the contracts. So you and a step increases where they in increase substantially in compensation until they until they uh, reach the maximum uh, pay at their level. So when you budget for this year's salary for somebody, you don't automatically put that step increase into. No, it happens during the uh, various uh, uh, times of the year. Okay. So but, we, you still, we, but you still know what it's going to cost for the year in yes, terms of the person. The other question I have is, we were just discussing this earlier tonight. I didn't think there was anybody in this budget that was going to do a step increase this year. There's two guys right here. Or, okay. Okay. Thank you. Bob? Top level, too. Yes. Mike, I just have two quick questions. You mentioned that you got an extra stock of some supplies. Does that include the utility poles that we had to chase down at with Sandy? Yeah, yeah because I know some of the uh, suppliers were trying to run off with them. I remember that. We still have the stash that we got right. from yes. Jersey Central. Good, good. <laughs> Hide them well. Uh, the other thing is this, um, and I don't know if this has been generally okay, yeah, circulated. Uh, the federal government has come out with some new criteria that in the event of another Sandy, any FEMA reimbursement you get would be predicated on what you did to protect your system against future disasters. Are we budgeted or are we starting to think about that? I, I've read that email. Yeah. And it's, it sounds like it's a, a, a tricky hoop they want us to jump yeah. through in order yep. to, to, to procure money. Yeah. I mean, you, you almost have to inspect and quantify every piece of equipment you have and what condition it's in the entire distribution system, yeah. which is insane. It is insane. I just was thinking maybe we should start thinking about it. God forbid if we ever have to go through this process again. All righty. I, I was going to say, a lot of Mike's equipment damage was just trees falling down, so unless we're prepared to sink all his wires, it's, you know, it's inevitable that trees are going to come down in the storm and they're going to that's going to be a problem. I don't know what to what steps we could take against it. I guess the question is, are there really any portions of the system that we, in retrospect, should be hardening that actually we could harden at this point? We, 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 we are doing that. That's, that's, okay. that's always been a philosophy of mine. In fact, that the underground switches at Madison Avenue is something that's, that's mm -hmm. been... Yeah, we spoke about that when I toured your right. facility. But that's something you were planning to do this year, I believe, yes. correct? Yeah. Yes, the, 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 equipment, the equipment has come in. It's just to get in, getting around and doing. Obviously, the weather has impacted us tremendously. It, it may pay then as a, just a good 
planning for the future to deal with FEMA is to start to have each department as they do upgrades that could fall into that category start to document them so we have a record that you know we we took that recommendation seriously. I mean, you can you can have a brand new pole and a transformer and new cables to to it, and a tree comes down and yeah. takes it down. No, I know. I'm saying you know when you look at our system, most of it is exposed, and the alternative you know, is to sink it all underground, which would be a massive expense. And I don't think anybody, anybody really thinks no that's more. a reasonable request. No yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Mike? So I think here we're, we're just the uh, question that still is, is the amount being transferred for capital adequate, I think is what we're taking forward on that one. Thank you. Thank you. So we're on to uh, library. Nancy, and as she's coming up, just a reminder, this one, you see two, really two lines in the budget because we, we do not uh, <clears throat> look at their budget line by line. We, there's a uh, statutory amount and there's the um, amount that we put back in as a offset to uh, charge them for electric, hoping that they uh, are saving money on the electric and putting this to other sources, but we figured just to give the library a chance to share their um, accomplishments the past year and their goals for this year and uh, what Sorry. quick overview of their budget. Um, uh, distributed um, four different items, but we will review all this uh, rather quickly if you are in agreement. Um, the first sheet, um, I draw your attention to a budget comparison of the past three years. Um, it's um, a budget total of $1,553,237 for this year. Um, of that, the borough support is $1,297,927, and that is the third of a mill and the electric that Bob alluded to. Um, the library does have some earned income. People pay their fines, and we rent out the chase room and so forth. So that totals <coughs> 34700 state aid of 7000 and uh, reappropriated of 17610 um, And I skipped over the trust, sorry, 196000 So that's how we get to the total of our uh, revenues uh, for this year. As you can see, over a three-year period, that's not much growth. It's a pretty static budget. Uh, in terms of costs, as is generally true of libraries, uh, salaries and benefits are the highest percentage. Uh, we're about 78,000, or 78%, um, with the salaries and the benefits that are about 12, um, 1.2 million, sorry. Uh, we budget 110,000 for the collection. Uh, the Friends of the Library fortunately give us a very um, generous donation each year, which helps us buy additional books and media. Uh, utilities, 129000 and all others, 102600 So that's not much to cover all the supplies, maintenance, professional free fees, training, and, and so forth. So that's a quick rundown in terms of our budget and illustrates the, the three-year picture. Um, the second page just gives you a few numbers. Our circulation of books and media was very healthy last year. It's up about 10% uh, over the year before. It's 200, 226,000 uh, plus. Um, our staffing levels have remained very constant um, over the past uh, three years. Uh, the one thing I would like to point out, uh, we have something new this year. We have a shared services employee. Uh, we have a shared services agreement with the Library of the Chathams. Uh, this is for a technology assistant. He's working full-time now. He was a part-timer in each library and he's now full-time working half and half in each library. And that's working out um, well. <clears throat> um, in terms of programming, last year we did about 400 programs, attracting several thousand people. Um, again, the Friends of the Library are very supportive in terms of speakers and performer uh, costs. The library budget provides all the staffing support. One new program last year was Tech Tuesdays. This is one-on-one -on -one computer training. It's been very popular. Um, people can make an appointment, come in and get some one-on-one -on -one instruction on, you know, how do, you, how do I use my e iPad or my telephone or Kindle or whatever scenario. Um, the second page includes a list of contributions um, for the two years, 2012 and 2013. The friends were particularly generous last year. We did some improvements 
um, that were based on our, our strategic plan of the previous year, uh, things like a new uh, book drop, um, some extra furnishings, uh, in addition to their regular um, contributions toward program and collection. Um, and this is made possible through very successful fundraising, raising, uh, their Drew mini courses, Touch a Truck, and annual campaign in particular. Um, the MPLI is Madison Public Library, Inc. Uh, that's our endowment, and it does hold certain funds that the donors have restricted, and that's primarily for collection and some for programming. Um, the other is just miscellaneous donations of about $8,500. Um, so that just gives you a very quick rundown. Um, before I move on to budget goals and so forth, I would like to recognize our board of trustees. You've appointed very dedicated, um, very good group of people to work with me. Um, this year, this past year, we had four new trustees, was quite, which was quite unusual. Uh, Dorothy Meany, Bill Van Risen, Dave Luber, and Stephanie Nesser. Um, and Stephanie is the school superintendent's alternate. And they joined Tom Bindinger, uh, Bob Coltis, Mary Beth Forte, Gary Ruckelshaus, and Mayor Connolly. And they each bring very distinctive <coughs> skills to the board, and uh, it's very important. Um, they work very closely with me and, and the staff in terms of um, making the library work. Um, I've given you some budget goals. These are based on our strategic planning that was done in 2012. So this is just a sampling of some of the major goals for the year, uh, 2014. Um, under the first priority, um, it involves providing convenient, continuous, relevant, customer-focused library service. So uh, in terms of objectives, we're talking about continuing the same library schedule. Last year, we opened an extra hour on Sundays, uh, which has proven popular. Um, we also stayed open on some of the holiday weekends that we had closed down. So, for example, we'll be open President's Weekend all, all weekend, including that Monday. Um, we've already talked about the shared services employee. Um, I hope later this year we uh, implement self-checkout. Um, we're doing a fair amount of off-hour programming, in other words, some Saturday <clears throat> and, Sunday and Sunday and evening programs. Last Saturday, the Children's Room had a program that attack, attracted over 60 people. Um, the children's room is also doing more STEM focus uh, programs such as build, Busy Builders and Lego Club. Um, strategic priority number two, uh, developing new service models. Um, you may or may not be aware that uh, Larry Tabor was very generous to the library and particularly to our local history section. And uh, we are starting a pilot project of digitizing the Madison Eagle and also buying a new reader printer. Um, thanks to his generosity. Again, the library budget is supporting the staffing <coughs> uh, that's involved with these things. Um, the Friends of the Library, uh, we're starting to uh, work on a touch a truck event for again this year. Uh, we're working on enhancements to our website, uh, including program registration and the email um, notifications and reminders and so forth that go along with that. And we belong to the Mars County group of public libraries called the Mars Automated Information Network. That's how we do a lot of our business. And uh, we are now offering Zinio, which is an online uh, <coughs> magazine service. Uh, and that is, it, it is just started, so it's, um, but I think it's going to be very popular. And lastly, um, we uh, will reimagine and refresh the library facility. And much of this goes into our um, capital budget request um, <coughs> in terms of replacing the HVAC system, um, implementing the space study. Last year we had a space study done by um, a design group that works a lot with libraries. And uh, we are tar uh, targeting the picture book room as our first uh, refresh uh, space in the children's room. And we are also talking about refreshing the courtyard area with some new furnishings and so forth. I gave you a copy of the memo that I think was distributed along with our capital budget request. So ideally speaking, you've seen this before. Again, we're talking about HVAC replacement and we're moving along. Uh, EI Associates has completed a bid <coughs> document. Um, so we're ready to go, hopefully, once the funding is, is approved. And um, we are moving along in terms of making plans um, or an abatement that has to go along with that um, because they need to get into the ductwork in the lobby area. 
and uh, we would also <coughs> abate the picture book room at the same time. So you've seen this memo before. I don't know if you have any questions related to all this, um, but that's a, a very brief rundown in terms of where we are for this year. Thank you. Pat? Um, you mentioned the uh, HVAC, and you said that there's some abatement tied to it. The recommendation that we had from the administration for capital budgeting for this year just covered um, the HVAC, four hundred fifty thousand right. dollars. Does that four hundred fifty include all the abatement you're talking about? No, that's the estimated budget for the HVAC. There's some prior uh, ordinances that we are going to be able to use for abatement, um, and <coughs> the library would fund the picture book room abatement. Uh, we have some capital funds set aside that we would use. Okay. Um, do you guys keep your own capital funds, or is that something? We've had that's some donations ordinance? over the years. Okay. Yeah comment um, over the years that we've set aside okay and looking forward to larger projects shall we say we've held uh, for instance uh, the Dodge when they gave us their goodbye kiss several years ago <coughs> they gave us uh, twenty some thousand dollars we put that aside because we knew we were going to have to use it for some type of capital uh, building projects uh, in uh, the endowment fund, we've received specific bequests for capital improvements, so we accumulate those and uh, use them, you know, on a request basis. Uh, a lot of our uh, capital funding thing that used to show up in the uh, capital budget in the uh, borough, uh, for instance, like the computers and things of that nature, which in the library, they're like on a five, six year life. Uh, I think in the borough you've changed because you're on a three-year cycle or something of that nature, so it's in the operating budget. Uh, those have generally been funded uh, through our contributions. That On that page two you saw, you see miscellaneous contributions. You kind of accumulate those. And when we replaced, I think in this past year, we replaced all the computers in the children's room. Uh, that came out of those kind of contributions. So we're using those kinds of funds to help things that used to show up in the operating budget, so to speak, uh, through the, hopefully, uh, you know, or I should say the capital budget. Thank you. Rob? Thank you. Um, so a couple years ago, I asked um, some questions about the... Um, uh, <coughs> the five-year capital plan and the abatement requirements and all that. And, and I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that at that time, the, the, uh, the five-year capital plan was around $860,000, uh, as it was reported. Um, the latest one, five-year plan, has come in at closer to $1.4 million. I'm wondering, is there, do you anticipate any incremental uh, uh, capital needs past this uh, 1.4 million dollar plan. I think what we've tried to do there is anticipate the major kinds of capital items, which the biggest, obviously, the two big ones that you have seen in there, the HVAC, which is a current, and once we get kind of the HVAC, because a lot of that impacts the roof where the units are installed from uh, that basis. Uh, we did work, for instance, on the skylights this past year to try to do all of an anticipation for replacing the roofing, and I think that's like three years out that our uh, warranty expires this year, and they've been very, very good in doing, you know, repair, replacement type of items when we have complaints, uh, but we're reaching the end of the useful life with the flat roof that we have up there and a lot of activity. The... Uh, if we did not have a good uh, maintenance man, Tom, he has to get up there uh, in the fall. He has to get the leaves off that to drew the drains. When it snows and ice, he has to go up there and open the drains to keep the drains so that they function. It's, uh, it's not the easiest building in the world to maintain because of that flat roof structure. So oh. I think, uh, to answer your question, we had in there also the... Uh, uh, Parking lot improvement in yeah, that's a, that's included in the yes, latest. In yeah. there. So what we tried to do is make sure we had what we did not. We put in some holding numbers, which you call for the strategic plan, the okay. refresh projects. Those we're looking to try to see more from our standpoint, as opposed to what would be requesting borough monies, because we're working right now on the uh, refresh 
activity. Uh, what are we going to do in terms of uh, replacing, updating uh, the teen activity, technologies impacting the way we produce and show programs and things of that nature. So those are kind of placeholders. Mm -hmm. We're anticipating that we will be working on a capital campaign. We're working on getting the numbers and what we really want to do how do we use the existing space? If you remember the, uh, the strategic plan said, hey, we're going to have to live with the building that we have, so we're going to have to work the interior the best we can uh, to really expand and what we want to do. So are those $100,000 placeholders net what you need from the borough after you assume you're going to be able to raise some funds yourself? That, I think, was to be a precautionary just so that people wouldn't be surprised. Okay. I think in there. We don't know exactly the number. We mm -hmm. just know they're going to be out there. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Just a little agenda touch here. What we'll do is we'll get through fire department and land use and engineering. We will take a five-minute stretch and... Uh, <laughs> yep, biological break, and then we'll uh, regroup and cover any departments that, any questions on departments that may not be covered that Jim may be able to handle. We will uh, then take comments from the public on the budget, and then we'll have so many general discussions, but most of it will be more discussions at our next meeting. So... With that, and knowing that you're between us and a fire, I mean a bathroom break, uh, <laughs> Chief, come on up. <laughs> no pressure. Just give me a blank check. There we go. Oh, come on. <laughs> Smart strategy. Okay. Um, just to review uh, some of the goals, we'll just breeze over this real quick, uh, or accomplishments from uh, 2013 real quick. Uh, in 2013, we were able to meet our goals as far as training, uh, testing and maintenance of our equipment and our facilities. Uh, we were able to outfit four new members with uh, turnout gear. Uh, working with the FMBA, uh, we were able to uh, maintain a good relationship with them as far as a partnership with the Borough Madison and, and the union. Uh, which is important, and it keeps a nice harmonious uh, atmosphere in the fire station as well. Also, working relationships between the, the union and the volunteers, uh, which is a constant work in progress on my part to uh, maintain harmony amongst those groups. They're, they're all friends, but there's a line, and they, they all like to dabble with that line, and I have to be the guy in the middle every now and then. But uh, we also met our goals of increasing revenue. Not that we're in the revenue generating business in the fire department, but uh, last year we did bring in, uh, through fines and fees, $103,451, which came back into, our, uh, into the borough's coffers. Um, shared services, we uh, are working, continuing to work in uh, Chatham. The building department took over uh, the uh, functions of doing building inspections and the fire department uh, had the fire subcode official responsibilities in Madison, so we're, we're also doing that in the borough of Chatham as well, um, and that's working out very well as, as well. We completed a fiber usage project that we started a couple years ago. Um, we all know the borough has the quote-unquote Rosenet fiber that was installed back in the 90s, um, but we never <coughs> took full advantage of it, and we still aren't taking full advantage of it from my perspective, but all our radio communications, when I say ours, fire, police, DPW, ambulance squad, we were still leasing lines from uh, Verizon at an annual cost of approximately $8,000 a year, so we can talk on the radios. Um, we completed that project in the, uh, in the spring of last year uh, where we migrated all those tie lines to uh, our fiber network, made an investment of uh, equipment and having some you know, fiber brought into places like the well sites that it initially was not put into. <coughs> so we're, we're going to recoup our investment after approximately five to five and a half years, um, where then it won't cost us anything because the fiber's ours and the equipment's ours. And it's been pretty rock solid. It stood up through, uh, through Sandy and all that part of it did, so uh, we didn't have any breakdown. So it was a good accomplishment on that part. Um, volunteer recruitment, uh, we're, we're working hard to uh, attain and maintain our volunteer ranks. Uh, 
since I've taken over as chief in 2010, I've managed to uh, bring in 19 volunteers into the department. I've got two in queue right now uh, that we're going through. It sounds like a great big number, but uh, the reality is of that 19 with members that have either uh, resigned, moved on, passed on, or got into an inactive role because of health or age, I've only been able to net gain approximately five volunteers. So it's, it's not a tremendous number that, that there. So we still need volunteers. Um, grants, uh, last year um, we applied for a 125,000 grant to replace, replace all of our SCBAs, our self-contained breathing apparatus. Uh, we were denied that grant, it was a FEMA grant. We reapplied for it again in 2014 and hopefully um, we'll be able to get it then. Our, our, our packs weren't old enough in some aspects to qualify, but we missed it by one year, so hopefully this year we'll be able to attain that. Um, if we don't, we have to make a, I have it in my capital project, I think in 2015 or 16, one of those years to, we have to replace our SCBAs. It's a, all my cylinders, uh, their end of life is, will, will come at that point, so we have to make an investment in, in the future to continue on fighting fires. Um, we, we developed with our IT department uh, through Jim Sanderson and AJ a uh, computer program uh, to computerize all of our maintenance records and the like um, in our incident reporting system. And we brought that on board uh, in the fall of last year and that's, that's been running good. Now we're going to bring all our maintenance records and, and things like that into it this year, which is going to be one of my goals for this year. And last year we also replaced all of our uh, fire hose that was outdated and or non-NFPA compliant. Uh, some of the goals for uh, 2014, um, again, continued with our uh, mandated training requirements, testing requirements, and maintenance of all of our equipment. Um, uh, keeping morale high is a big thing in the fire station. Again, keep keeping harmony. Um, the acquisition of Geraldine has done that. Uh, the guys seem to enjoy working on her and, and, you know, bringing that history back to us. So that's a good morale builder. Um, Attract and retrain, uh, retain more volunteers in 2014. Um, apply for grants when they become available in 2014. Can again computerize our maintenance records. And uh, I have a vehicle replacement in my capital budget for 2014 as well to replace a uh, 2014 uh, pickup truck that we're, that's pretty well rotted out from, from the underside that uh, is due for replacement. And also in 2014, one of my goals is hopefully to hire an additional replacement firefighter uh, in the career division as well. As for my budgets, um, first budget I'll talk about is the uh, public safety complex budget that um, <coughs> myself and Chief Datchison put it together, but I'm kind of the lead on it. Uh, it has an increase this year of approximately $3,750. Um, the two items that are representing that increase versus the decrease, uh, one is uh, you're required to have a five-year internal sprinkler piping maintenance done on your fire sprinkler system, which that building has. So we have um, 17 50, or excuse me, $2,000 for that. And uh, when we were going through our financial crisis a couple of years ago, not that they were 100% out of it, uh, one of the items that we cut was uh, washing the windows on the exterior. So we, we've asked to put that back in for approximate cost of 17.50 to get all the windows washed again on the exterior. Okay, um, and that's pretty much it for our uh, public safety complex bu budget for that. So if there's any questions on that before I move on to the fire department budget, I can answer them. Done? Yep, I think we'll move on. What, 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 what wait, about? Bob, and then Pat, you do. Uh, in terms of your equipment, uh, narrow banding, um, is that included in the radio budget? Um, oh, that they're talking about upgrades to our radios and different banding. We budgeted for that last year. Mm -hmm. We uh, hired a, a consultant who is in the processes, process of trying to secure us. Uh, we're all narrow band. That, right. That, that, I, that's one issue there. There's the, another upgrade the big, coming. The bigger issue is the, the fire and police were in the 470 range, the T-band range. That's what I'm And the FCC of, yeah. has come out and said, uh, we're going to uh, say you can't use that. I think it's 2021 or 22, yeah. somewhere around there. Uh, so we're going to have to stop using it. So we're trying to get out ahead of the curve. That's why we put the money in the, in the budget last year. Um, actually, we took it out of the Fireman's Trust uh, mm -hmm. account to hire a consultant. He's researching now 
frequencies are tough to come by, as, as yes, you know, are. especially yeah. we, we, what we want to do is stay in the 460 range yeah. so that we can still talk to everybody around us versus going to a new spectrum where we could talk to each other, but nobody can talk to us and we can't talk to anybody unless we have another radio, which is an, a whole other problem. Unto yeah, itself. so I was going to say if it requires new so radio. So we're in that process now. Um, they seem to have found um, three frequencies um, that are close to us and they're in the process of um, doing the research to see how we're going to have the, if there's going to be an overlapping issue and if so we might have to get test testing done to see how bad that could or could not be and they get letters of agreement with those municipalities. I'll talk good. to you offline about that. For I'll talk to you offline about that okay. for obvious reasons. Yeah. It doesn't affect you because you're in the 460s. You're, you're golden. Yeah. You're already now abandoned too. So, and we're already now abandoned already when we went to the 470s. It's just the frequency itself. Because if we don't, we have to replace everything. And I'm saying pagers, portables, radios, um, transmitters, voters, it's everything. And that's what I was getting at. So those radios alone could cost $1,200 a yeah. piece. Yeah. No, yeah, it's not. So it was the money I forget we budgeted for or we're spending is approximately $6,000 to try and find new frequencies. It's, it's, it's worth the investment yeah. to do that. Because then Absolutely. it's just reprogramming. And we have all the equipment to do yeah. about 95% of that in-house. So gotcha. to make that work. So anything else on public safety building? Oh, no, no public safety. Just on safety. the building itself. No. Yep. So we'll, we'll go to fire now. And then. Okay. Uh, my uh, fire budget, two categories or budgets that I have are uh, vehicle maintenance and uh, my operating, my, on the vehicle maintenance portion of it, I've asked for an increase of $2,000, which is reflected in the budget um, required for our aerial truck. Every five years, we're, re we're required to do what they call a non-destructive test on the aerial portion itself, all the welds are, are inspected and, and I'm going to say x-rayed um, to make sure there's no cracks or hidden cracks and then if there is any then it has to be dealt with at that point. But that's required to be done every two years by a third party and the approximate cost on that is about $2,000. So, and then on my operating budget, um, I have an increase of $1,150 just to uh, offset some of the costs and expenses we've been incurring with doing medical runs, uh, buying equipment, stuff. I've been taking out of my regular budget, but I just want to uh, start having a line item for the replacement <laughs> of items associated with that. So um, those are the only two increases in my operating budget and my maintenance budget right now. Pat? Well, actually, there is one big increase. That's salaries and wages. Um, it looks like it's up 15%. And I looked at the individual salary budget uh, sheet, and I couldn't figure out how that happened. But do you have a better idea? It's about a hundred and sixty-four thousand dollar increase. The salary portion of our of the budget. I usually don't get too much involved with it other than... No, I'm, that's why I'm kind of looking at Jeff. Yeah, yeah <laughs> on it too. So it's, it, it's going to evolve around or revolve around, I'm sure, steps increases um, as guys are moving through the ranks. That well, yeah, that was the other interesting point. I mean, if, when I looked at the sheet with the individual salaries, it actually, for the, some of the staff, it looked like the steps were built in, yet there's still an adjustment total at the bottom as well, so... But that, even that doesn't explain it because that's a, that's budgeted the same year over year. Yeah, this is a substantive. I had the same question as you okay. did on the. Unless Robert can answer it right now, we'll get back to you with that, Pat. All right. So we'll, so what? We'll here he comes. Well, Robert's He's got the answer. The question I have, Robert, is how come you keep going back to the fifth row instead of staying up front? But that's not. <laughs> <laughs> he wants the exercise. Yep. <laughs> Mr. Cody asked me that question three weeks ago, uh, and the, the the simple answer is. We are required to account for the uh, safety code official, the fire code official. The fire code official in the 2013 numbers was, was not in the 2013, but it is in the 14. I can, uh, I can show you that, Pat. So was there a shift from another department to here then? Yeah. It just came out of the 13 okay, so, numbers okay. separately. So, so if, if we well, can... But there's no, per, there's no individual line on the detailed personnel that shows that person. It's it's okay. Ed Nunn, the the uh, fire code official. Well, Ed, Ed Nunn's, but Ed Nunn's, but Ed but Ed Nunn is listed on here as being budgeted in 2013 and 2014. But, yeah. So so, I, so what we want, if and it can be sent out as a memo prior to next meeting, is 
if it's shifted from another department, where, where did it come from? And yeah, so we can actually yeah, the, compare the actual a, increase. A, 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 apples to apples. And yeah. so, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I actually, the, you know, when I was thinking about the explanation, that was one of the areas that was a bit of, a bit of a challenge because I could see in some places where we were shifting personnel from probably one budget to another, but I really didn't want to have to go through this entire right. book to figure out where that person went. Yeah. So I assume there should be a, a redu reduction in building code. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah. 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 The actual increase, Pat, the actual increase year over year, 13 to 14 in fire is 49,000, not the 160. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that would make more sense. Okay. I, that's what I kind of came up with just looking through real fast. Thank you. I still want to see it in this attraction somewhere. <laughs> and then finally, um, one, of, one of my goals in 2014 and one of the things that we've talked about too is um, replacing and hiring another firefighter in the career division. Um, I need help during the daytime hours, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. Um, there just simply isn't enough volunteers around. Um, they're all either working out of town and they're not home. They're few and far between, um, especially during the daytime hours. In 2013, we had 1,200 calls total for the whole year. Of that 1,200 calls, 795 of them were between 8 and 4.30, Monday through Friday, 66% of them. And that's when I have my least amount of manpower. In 2010, when I was promoted to chief, we never backfilled um, the re that, that body, that person. We went from 14 to 13. Um, in September of 2011, um, ISO came in, insur Insurance Service Organization, and did their, I don't want to say every five-year, six-year audit. And um, our biggest deficiency was just manpower. Out of a total of 15 total credits that we could have got for manpower within the fire department, we only gained, um, they only gave us 4.65 or 4.56, excuse me, credits out of total possible 15. We actually dropped in ranking from a class two to a class three town. Our equipment is top notch. Our water <coughs> system is top notch. Our training is top notch. It's just in the manpower uh, level is where that deficiency comes in. So I, I requested it. It's not reflected in your budget, um, but I, it, it's something that we really need. And it's uh, the firefighter we're looking to hire is a Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 firefighter that's going to help fill that void during the daytime hours, the Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, when, uh, when we're at our lowest or at our weakest. So, so the same questions that went to uh, Chief Tatchison is what is the cost of that and what is the uh, impact on overtime, if any? The annual uh, starting salary was around 51000 for a probationary firefighter. Um, benefits on top of that, as, as, as Matt said, uh, would, I don't know, probably bring that in around 60, 63, somewhere around there maybe. Um, That's helpful to start them off. Yeah, the, you're talking, if you're <coughs> single, single coverage is probably ten to 12000 then you'd have pension costs on top of it. So I'd say it's probably about 65000 and as far as overtime costs, th there'd be a minimal reduction in it because it, it's, it's filling a void. That's all it is. It's another pair of hands. You know, um, when we pull up to a job now, especially during the daytime hours, you know, as an incident commander, I know there's at least five things that got to get done. Boom, 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 boom. I only got enough to maybe do one or two, and then I've got to start to prioritize which the one or two are going to be and then shuffle them around until I, I can get bodies to show up. And, Sometimes it doesn't happen until later on or way later on until the bodies do show up. So um, need help during the day. I don't know how else to, to say that. We're at our weakest when we're getting, when we're the busiest. So. I, I was going to say, this is more just a general interest question. You know, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 is about, you know, a quarter of the week. But you're saying you get two-thirds of your calls during that time frame? Yeah. Any particular reason why? I mean, what, what's the common element that drives calls up during the middle you know, of the I, day. I, I've been doing this 30 some odd years. I, there's no rhyme or reason other than more people are awake, more people are out and about. I guess you know, so. More people come into town from a traffic, from a you know, business perspective. Um, we're a bedroom community at night, mm -hmm. so there's not much going on, even though there's a lot going on in Madison. I don't mean that negatively, but <laughs> um, that aspect of it. But, but the, numbers, the numbers show that. Um, yeah. you know, we, we were able to track it in that manner, and it's, it's that's just the way it is. Ostry? What kind of calls they are, because they're not all fire-related calls. Yeah, um, 
I, like I used to say, we're not, we're like Martin's Home Decorating Center, that old commercial where we ain't just paint, we ain't just fire. We do everything from um, my, my smoke alarms beeping to CO alarms, uh, medical calls, pump outs. Um, I hear something. We were at St. Vincent's Church uh, yesterday taking help and take a bat with animal control out of the belfry. Um, so we, we do a lot of things for, for people. Um, we also do stuff from a non-response perspective, like for our seniors, um, you know, we, we take really good care of them. Um, we kind of try and be their contact <coughs> person if they don't have anybody to go to. Call us. We'll try and hook you up with something or somebody. Um, we, we install their smoke detectors for them. We change their batteries for them. Uh, we do things like that. Uh, so we, we do a lot of stuff, um, not only for the community, but even for our public safety complex. We, we you know, we plow the snow. We're shove, my guys are shoveling the sidewalks. They're cleaning that place up so the commuters can get, you know, to and from every morning down that sidewalk. So uh, we, we do a lot of stuff other than just fight fires, but we do that as well. And then we do like the confined space services and things like that for the sewer department, electric department, joint sewer authority, things which requires training, which is a lot of time too. So. Any other questions for the chief? I'm just curious if you have a breakdown of when those various things happen. In other words, <clears throat> if you're, are you spending 50% of your day, time, hours on medical emergencies or, or spending it more on helping out seniors? Do you have that kind of breakdown? It, it, I, I'm going to say no, we don't. But I'm going to tell you, having been in that firehouse for all these years, um, you could sit there for hours, and it's as quiet as a church. Oh, no, and then in two minutes, and, and Bob is not in his head there, all of a sudden you got four calls, like bam, 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 one on top of you, and then it goes quiet again. Or they're spaced <laughs> apart an hour apart. There, there is no rhyme or reason. No. Weather is about maybe the only thing that has a factor into it, but it, it's just incredible. You know, Jeannie used to ask me the same questions, and I can remember, I can hear, and she used to drill me on it all the time, and I had the same answer. I, there is no rhyme or reason, you know. I don't know why Monday's busier than Tuesday this week, and, and so on. So. All right, thank you. So we have the firefighter suggestion to, uh, that we'll put on our list. Engineering and land use. Bob. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I guess I'm batting cleanup. That's a good thing. Uh, before the meeting, I talked to Mr. Cody, and he uh, had the pleasure of having to sit home and watch the video that Rob takes, and told me the budget hearing was too long and what I have to say, and he told me that the, uh, the uh, Gettysburg Address occurred in 300 words, and so I <laughs> not, should keep not it <laughs> he's, he's a wise man, that Ray Cody. <laughs> so, just to uh, to cut to the chase, um, I have a budget presentation. It's on our website, which I'll hand out uh, after we talk about uh, our our uh, budget items. It has a great deal more detail, which obviously I can talk about in great great more detail. But the 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 uh, the over the overview of uh, the land use department's activities for last year were that uh, you know private construction projects uh, handled through the building department uh, topped fifty five million dollars in construction value uh, as a result of the permitting process on that construction and the inspections generated uh, over sixty eight hundred inspections were performed um, that is an all-time high in terms of the number of inspections that that department has ever done. Uh, so it includes both Madison inspections and Chatham inspections. So in terms of workload, the department has performed more tests than it has in its recorded history uh, for any prior year. Uh, so a lot of uh, kudos should go to Russ Brown and his uh, subcode officials for getting that work done. Obviously, Val is the technical assistant and the other full-time employee in that department. Uh, so building had a very good year in terms of workload, a moderate year in terms of revenues. Uh, we didn't have any major, major building projects, uh, so a lot of the work revolved around smaller projects, which is why the revenues were off a little bit from last year in the building department. 
Um, lucky thing for, uh, for the uh, land use team was that uh, the zoning, uh, planning and zoning boards and the zoning uh, permits that were processed were again higher and our revenue from uh, the zoning permits was much higher than ever before in our recorded history. And so um, kudos to Fran and Dan and Frank uh, Russo for uh, putting out a large number of zoning permits uh, and revenues topped $100,000 from their efforts uh, in our department. So um, that worked out very well for us as well. Um, public construction via the engineering, uh, obviously uh, 2.8 million was accomplished last year. Uh, again, the summaries are here in terms of what was accomplished uh, in 2013. I think it was a good year for us, a productive year. Uh, we got a lot of work completed and on the street. Uh, very happy about that. Um, uh, our department as a whole, uh, land use services, uh, which is, you know, uh, building and planning and zoning, um, all pulled together, uh, and I'm counting uh, development fees with this as well. We have development fees that we take in uh, and estimate for uh, water, for sewer, for uh, road openings, and for uh, affordable housing. Uh, altogether, the department pulled in $763,000, four hundred ninety four and four hundred seven sixty three four ninety one for 2013. And that was really only off of, uh, about 20 grand from last year. So as a whole, the department did extremely well. Uh, again, the workload was higher. Perm permit revenues were slightly off. But overall, a very productive year for our department. And uh, we expect these accomplishments to continue through 2014. Um, on the relatively level budget requests from uh, all our uh, separate departments, um, overall we have uh, five full-time employees and five part-time employees. And, you know, my perspective is that the productivity of the people that I work with is extremely high in municipal government. I'm very proud of the work that they do. Um, as far as the uh, individual uh, budgetary items are concerned, 165 going through 165, which is the engineering, uh, looks like our, our uh, salary and wage is relatively level. Um, professional services are up about $30,000. And that is uh, an accounting matter, which re revolves uh, taking our zoning uh, consulting fees away from the construction department and putting them into the engineering department, which they felt was a more appropriate uh, place to charge those fees from. In terms of land use as a whole, it's uh, revenue neutral. It's, uh, it's uh, expense neutral. We're taking away from one department and adding to another. That, that's uh, that's uh, revenue. You're doing the same for expenses? This is an expense line. Uh, the items we'll take away from expense. construction were added to the engineering path. Expense neutral, not revenue neutral. Okay. The, the salaries are actually going down. And this is another one of those places where the amount of money that's being charged to this department for, I guess, you specifically is changing. But uh, I looked through a couple of places. I couldn't figure out where it was being transferred to. So, again, uh, yeah, that'd be helpful. Yeah, I mean. That's, um, a, that's a comment you don't need to answer. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. So, we'll. In any department where the salary has shifted, let's let's get a uh, clarification on that. Yeah, if you need the, more detail on those estimates, best to go back to uh, Robert and Jim, and uh, and uh, I'm happy to, to weigh in on it. Obviously, uh, uh, overall, um, again, the next uh, area is the historic preservation one uh, area 175. Um, uh, uh, Seems like uh, the same request from last year is being carried through to this year. In I think terms we, let's, of uh, cost. Yeah. It's a small department. We're not going no, to move, 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 move on. Move on. Well, well, you're you're reaching your 300 word limit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to stop right here. Does anyone have any questions? What? Quick question. We've got a question on engineering before we. Uh, the control total. I, I'm not sure what that is, and it's uh, it's more than doubling. So. To go. This is the, this is non salary engineering. Yeah. So that's that's all go operating back. expenses, Ben. So page. the increase of the professional services is what's inflating um, the control tools so much. Right here. On, that's a total of what's above. No, I, I realize that, but it's not obvious that that's connected. Yep. 
Oh. Could you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Sure. If you add up um, from lines 215 down, uh, that's the operating non-salary line items. That's what that control total is. I see. Okay. And and the, the reason for the increase? Um, it's just that we're shifting money out of salary and wages. And oh, yeah, yeah. Professional yeah. Services okay. Line items. Back to professional okay. services. Thank you. Got it. All right. There, there is one big jump in professional services for historic preservation. It's going from three to 13,000. I'll answer that, Mayor. Yeah, um, that's actually the requested amount was $13,000, but if you move over oh, I one see, yeah. more line to the right, recommended, you'll see what yeah. recommended okay. was 3000 They wanted a significant increase in professional services so they could do some photo documentation. Uh, we were uh, encouraged Hill. them to try to see if they could do that in-house. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Why we won't spend much time on that department because it's not all that left in there. So the planning board over at 180, uh, the only significant change that I see is under professional services, and I think they, the planning board wanted to do some land use master planning in the coming year, so we wanted and to put a little bit of money Jim, in there. Jim covered that already. Yep. Got it already? Yep. Any questions um, on that one? Let's go to that. All right. Again, zoning board, no surprises. Under professional services, you see an item requested there, which is carried through at 55000 and I believe there's uh, a reserve that the zoning board normally puts aside for commercial site planning. Uh, sometimes they hit it, sometimes they don't. Uh, more often, uh, they don't hit that number, and uh, the, the, the balance is returned to the budget at the end of the year. Environmental Commission 186, not asking for anything. And State Uniform Construction Code, uh, Area 195. Um, the only changes there in terms of increases reflect uh, the addition of additional part-time staff member uh, necessary to uh, fully assume the operations of Chatham Borough's uh, construction department. Um, we will uh, realize a significant increase in revenues uh, by that full assumption this year as opposed to last year, and uh, it will definitely uh, improve our uh, productivity ratios in terms of uh, how much revenue we generate versus how much it costs the borough to maintain the department. At the <clears throat> maintenance of equipment line is going from $4,500 to $9,000, yet we've been spending next to nothing. Do you know why that is? The uh, 212 I'll get back to you on that, Pat. Okay. I don't know if Rob, Bob does right away, but for a construction code. I suspect they're 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 uh, anticipating uh, we're going to be uh, circulating a lot more paper, making more copies, and uh, doing that type of work with Chatham Borough that we weren't doing before. So uh, I suspect there's going to be more equipment. And All over. Yep. I can uh, certainly get a, a more detailed answer from Russ uh, tomorrow okay. morning. I can report back to you, Pat. Anything else on... Construction code. All right. Stop a curve. I just thank uh, you. Pass around the button presentation. If you need your your break. Four score and ten minutes ago you started. <laughs> oh my God! Now I know where the nine thousand dollars was. Save trees. <laughs> Not too bad. Well done. Thank you. You covered a lot. All right. It is nine thirty-one. So I move we uh, take a break. Reconvene at about 9.37. I'll give you an extra minute because I'm generous right now. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hey, yep, these chairs. Wow. I can't answer your black book questions. We'll okay. So uh, for the council, any questions on any other departments that were not covered? All right. More, but I'll send them to Jim. So, yeah. Sounds good, yep. Uh, right now, welcome, I'll open, the, open up to the public. Who is remaining? Any questions or comments on the budget? This is limited to only only budget items, and the usual rules are in effect. Three minutes, state your name, and so on. Uh, Sir Cielo, Park Avenue. Um, talked to a lot of people, that, and I. Uh, how come um, a lot of the meetings are not on television no more? Who? Uh, we're, we're right right now. We're on budget. We're. Um, we, we got preempted by the Olympics. All right, the, could, I talk, could I talk about the... Right, right now, it's just budget. All right. 
Well, suggest, could I talk about the public works, what they talked about, like $30,000 to fix the potholes? <coughs> yes, you can talk about that. Well, why uh, a suggestion is maybe you ought to get a private contractor, meaning you ought to get some contractor, big contractor's going to do all these new capital movements. Maybe he can throw that in there for do a little cheaper and do a better job. That's just the suggestion on that. And I'd also like to know, uh, and I don't need it now right away, but what's the total cost of gas to run all the, all the fire department, police department, public, what is the total, total cost of gas? You have that somewhere. Yeah. Um, gas. Well, Food diesel. What, what I'm saying is maybe uh, we could park some cars, once, like for example, the, the, the police department. Like I, I said, last year, uh, years ago, they used to park in front of a Jim Burnett building and the copy, you know, take, take a break on the cars. Let the, car, let the cars cool <laughs> off. We won't let go the there. cars cool off a little bit and save some gas. And again, uh, like I said, uh, in, the, in my world, the overhead is the key. Uh, maybe we, uh, we should uh, sort of get rid of some assistance. And, assist and again, I'm talking about the public works, I mean, the, the board of ed in the borough. Did you talk about maybe getting together and coming and fixing the sea swing and getting together and cut some overhead down? We, we, like, we, instead we, of having like a superintendent down at, for the Board of Ed, making over $100,000, you got a superintendent, maybe you just need one. I think we could save a lot of money, and that building, that east side should be fixed up. Did you think about it when you talk to the Board of Ed? Are you, are you considering maybe uh, getting together? And putting well, we, we do need to reconvene our uh, Shared Services Committee, which we will... Uh, do so shortly. I mean, and, uh, the whole well, thing is over. I mean, I've been done with the budget budget meetings. It's the same old. Thing. If you want to save money, there's a lot of ways to save money, but she's got to do what she's got to do, and it's overhead. Like I yeah. said, I can't come to your house and lay a hundred brick and bring three labors with me. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't know if he's looked at it, but it they're 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 destroyed. It's it's unbelievable. You wouldn't want it in front of your house. In front of Walgreens, in front of that uh, that new car, the uh, rental car place, they're not even a year old. The aprons, they were not put in right. Uh, that, that's not in our budget, so let's so. But I'm just saying, you know, they're brand new pavers. So the, but, but but we're we're right now just discussing budget. Those, those were well, put I'm, in by private owners, and so. Then, then any council people go look at what I'm talking about. I don't know why these things are happening. You know, in other words, it's a brand new, brand new entrance way. they got to be replaced already. Not even a year old. And um, are they going to talk it, again? It, it, yep, there'll, there'll be one more, one more shot. Which right. right now, we're just on budget. So, anything else? Anyone else want to speak on budget items? S seeing none, I will move on. And again, um, two weeks from now, we will be doing the final discussions on the budget, so we can introduce it in um, March. Any other uh, thoughts from the council members on? the budget before we head towards our meeting two weeks. Okay, moving back to our regular agenda, if I can find it in my a lot of papers today. Our ordinances for hearings. Okay, ordinances scheduled for hearing were introduced by title and passed on the first reading at a regular meeting of the council held on January 27, 2014. All were posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to members of the general public. Call up ordinances for second hearing and ask the clerk to say to read said ordinances by title. Sorry. Ordinance 1 2014, ordinance of the borough of Madison replacing ordinance 2 2009 pertaining to part time non union salaries and offices. I open the hearing. Is there anyone in the public wishing to comment on ordinance 1 2014? Seeing none, I close the hearing. I move Ordinance 1-2014. I second the motion. Council discussion. Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. I call up Ordinance, or I'm sorry, I declare Ordinance, I, I, let's start over again. I declare the aforementioned or ordinance adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. 
Ordinance 2, 2014, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, appropriating $1,660,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2014 Roadway Reconstruction Program. I open the hearing. Anyone wishing to comment on Ordinance 2, 2014? See none, I close the hearing. May I move Ordinance 2-2014? Second. Council discussion? I will just uh, won't read the email, but Mary Beth Forte emailed. She couldn't get a babysitter tonight, so she apologized that she wouldn't be here, but she wanted to. She said in the email, very often people don't get thanked and wanted to thank the council for following through on the funding of the road projects. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. I declare Ordinance 2-2014 adopted and finally passed, and I ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 3-2014, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 147 of the Borough Code entitled Public Records and Documents Fees 4, amending the fees for construction and non-construction bid documents. I open the hearing on Ordinance 3, 2014. Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close the hearing. May I move Ordinance 3 2014? Second. Council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. I declare Ordinance 2. 3, 2014, adopted and finally passed, and ask the clerk to publish notice there in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance to, with the law. And now we are on to invitation number three from the public, where you may comment on anything not restricted to the budget or the agenda items. If you wish to comment, please step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone, else, anyone wishing to be heard? Sam. Sam Searcy, Yellow Park Avenue. I uh, just want to touch on the, you know, the, if I'm not mistaken, what is the, the, the police department, what is it, $300,000 for overtime? Is that the number they threw out or something like that? That's the budget yep. number. Uh, you know, then you talked about the crossing guards. Uh, just a suggestion, I think it's, I think they got a raise. It's like, like when they got a little private job or they got to do a job on, on Main Street or one of the side streets, they hire a cop. I think it's $85 an hour. It actually comes out of our money. Maybe you could get a crossing guard to give them a little overtone just to, to direct the traffic, just a thought, you know, if you want to save some money there. Because, uh, well, again, it goes back to overhead. So instead of using a cop, use a crossing guard. Just a thought. Thank you. Is uh, Billy Ellard, uh, is that sold that or what? Everybody's asking. Not Billy Ellard. Uh, Green, Green Village Green Road? Or, uh, no, not it. That's, that's not slow then, okay. Uh, and again, uh, <coughs> I would, uh, what's the feeling on the council people with the, this, with the Board of Ed coming over next door? I mean, that, that it, right, right now this is an opportunity to uh, comment and not necessarily poll the, the council, but obviously the council and all the Board of Education members want to work together to extend the tax dollar as far as possible in the challenging times. And like I said, you, could, you know, if you want to really start saving money, that's, that's where it's at. You've got to cut some of the overhead down. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Don and then Carmen next. Uh, Don Brunner, 20 Raven Drive. At the last meeting, I asked about um, the, having a deputy borough clerk, and I was just wondering why when the past deputy borough clerk passed away, the borough did not advertise for her position. Um, so that we don't have a deputy borough clerk. Um, it was advertised internally first, mm -hmm. uh, and, and usually that's governed by the union contracts. We have a duty under the various union contracts to post internally first for positions, and that's how it was filled. I'm sorry, what did you say? 
It, it, it was, was filled by posting it internally. We did advertise internally among existing staff. They have a right of first refusal under the union contracts. So we just still could possibly be filled, or no, it, it is filled. It is filled. It is filled. There is a deputy borough clerk. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah so we, we did that? state that last yeah, last time. Hey, Mac huh? Okay. Yep. Uh, my mistake. I'm sorry. No problem. That's oh, all right. It's okay. Anyone else? Yes, Carvin. I was hoping that David uh, would have been here from, for this next question. Uh, years ago, when they, they used to plow the roads, they used to plow curb to curb. Uh, the last, the second storm, storm before this one, when they came <coughs> by, they were about six feet away from the curb. Then we had another big storm, and that they didn't go any further back. They went right up to where they stopped plowing. Now, some of the streets, I drive a school bus in the middle of the day, and if there's a car parked on the side, I can't get through there with the school bus because the roads are so narrow. Um, then you have the people who get their driveways plowed, and the plower pull, pushes it across the street. Then when the town comes and plows, they don't push that stuff back. They go around it. So now the road is even more narrow because of the, the contractors pushing the, the, uh, the snow in the street. I mean, is there an ordinance or something that prevent, prevents them from doing that? It, it is illegal to take your snow off, off your property and leave it on a public road. And so if you do see that, please report it to us and we will uh, follow through. All, it. You, yeah, all I, you have to do is ride around town and you can, I, it, it, I don't it, have to report it. No, no, I, I certainly, I, I have seen that too. It is more common practice than it should be. I know we've sent out reminders and we do remind people to, um, take care of their sidewalks, and so the, the next alert, hope maybe this next storm will miss us, but uh, maybe as we send out that next alert, we'll remind people that to tell their uh, contractors that they cannot push their snow onto the street. Okay, um, the other thing is, when the, the road department hires, or the DPW hires new employees, and they allow them to plow the streets, a lot of these uh, new employees are young people who probably never plowed before in their life. Maybe they should be uh, taught how to plow curb to curb because the, as it is, some of the roads aren't that, that wide to begin with. And if you, if you don't go as far back as you can, then that's why you have a lot of problems. I'm really concerned about not only me driving the school bus, but all our fire vehicles are, are bi almost as big or wider than the bus that I drive. And what if they can't get through because of, of a car park there and, and the road isn't as... Uh, is why. So I would hope that someone could notify the road department. I'm not going to do it. They don't listen we'll, to me. We'll, we'll, we'll pass the... So uh, make yeah. sure that they try to widen the streets as, as much as they can. Yeah, but, well, all good point, points, Carmen. We'll, we'll pass that on to David. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? No, you, 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 you only get one shot in each category. Yep. So, Any, and seeing none, we move on to the next part of the agenda. There are no ordinances for introduction, so now on to consent agenda resolutions. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Okay. Mayor, I move consent agenda. R63-2014 through R71-2014 and R73-2014 through R75-2014. Second. Discussion? Or any need to be pulled? Seeing none, roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Public safety, $3,661.33. Health and public assistance, $127.36. 
uh, Public Works and Engineering, $207,794.71. Community Affairs, $2,221.19. Borough uh, Finance and Borough Clerk is $2,499,159.32. And utilities, $104,294.08. Total is $2,817,257.99. Can I move the vouchers? Do I have a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Yes. Rowe? Oof. Sorry. <laughs> That's quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get home. After, yeah. After the two hour mark, you're allowed to talk to the gun. Okay. Under new business, I'd like to make the final following appointments to our strategic planning com committees. And we've already appointed the um, chairs, but I'll just reconfirm. Joining the chair, the capital budgeting, join the chair of uh, Bruce Galton will be Peter Krankovich, George Helfrich. Martin Heller and Council Member Rob Catanello. For municipal budgeting, joining Chair Tom Bittinger, Art Powell, Paul Ogier, Mark Soriano, and Council Member Ben Wolkowitz. And for electric utility, joining the Chair Martin Barbado would be Gary Ruckelshaus, John Formica, Herb Worthington, and Jim Burnett, and Council Member Carmela Vitale. And operations, joining the Chair Maureen Byrne, would be Fran Boardman, Tony DeRosa, Lisa Ellis, Diane Mann, John Hoover, and Council Member Bob Landrigan. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Pat? So I'm going to be voting no. I think the process is great. I think the people that we're appointing are great. Um, the only issue I had is I had volunteered before the election for a committee. Um, I had had discussions with the mayor about it. I was led to believe I would be able to participate. Um, although we're not voting on them tonight, the rules that we were given earlier or late last night um, indicate that you know we're going to restrict participation by council to the extent that I'm not comfortable with. Um, and that's pretty much the short version of my speech since it's late. All right, thank you. I apologize for any uh, misleading, and as this has been a process and evolution. Um, and hopefully no council member ever feels that their input will be limited and we will uh, make sure we work with the chairs to have that not happen. And as, as mentioned, um, there may be a few more names we'll come back to on this to add to these committees. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? No. And I move that we adjourn. Thank you. I don't think you could. Uh, I don't know.